Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We will call this work <coughs> session to order, and I thank everyone for being here today. Public comment, clerk, I believe we have one, uh, ci one citizen who signed up. But before we start with the citizens' comment, I just would like to read this. It says, the Board of Commissioners welcomes our citizens' comment. It is my goal to make these meetings run smoothly and effect effectively in order for the government to be efficient. In this vein, I ask everyone to follow the rules of this body as directed by the chair. I also ask, ask that everyone please assist me in keeping order in this room during this <coughs> deliberation process so that our citizens' time, including those watching on TV, and our time is not fruitless. When I give a warning about timeliness or request order, I ask that you, that you observe it. If I give a second warning about timeliness or request for order and, and the same is not observed, observed, I will ask a second warning about timeliness and request for order to be restored. I will ask our Sergeant of Arms, which means our law enforcement, present to restore order to this meeting. Also, please be mindful of the three minute limit and when you hear the buzzer, please wrap up your sentence. When you come forward, please state your name and address for the record. Our first citizen is Mr. Larry Pierce. Mr. Pierce, please come forward and state your name and address. I'm going to move this over here to the, the microphone. Oops. <coughs> Can everyone hear me? Good. That's the first order of business. Larry Pierce, 4120 Van Sant Road, Douglasville, Georgia. I am so glad <coughs> that policies and things are written so we can all follow them. But one of the biggest ones is a constitution that says freedom of speech. And uh, I don't know how I got involved in all this mess, but it is another time in our life that Halloween's coming. So Mr. Pennington, who says 7-Eleven was a hoax, he fits right into October. Now, good morning, Madam Chair and fellow council people and commissioners, both of them, city and everybody. Last week, there was a few little things said, but you know, I told my son a long time ago that the word shut up is ugly, and it's kind of like <clears throat> joking in Alabama, trailer park trash. So anyway, be it what it may, the corner, and, and I guess you know when you hear Larry Pierce corner slash, the corner started out telling you some facts that she thought was true. And Ann Jones brought it out chronologically to you. And every one of you heard it, but you evidently, Mr. Mitchell likes to say this, about what is transparent. And I'll tell you what, some of y'all's glasses are getting really fogged up because you can't see what she's saying. Now, <coughs> Last week, the Sheriff's Department celebrated a man who was infamous in this county, as much as Buford Pusser was in Tennessee trying to clean up gambling and Sodom and Gomorrah and a little bit of all that stuff. So anyway, 20 years, and he gave me this hat, signed by him, when he was coming out of the meeting. And he said, Larry, if you ever need it, I'm going to sign it and it's your get out of jail free card. So let me tell you something. What does that mean? Oh, all right. The corner is costing money and I'm gonna give it to you next week. The cooler is a facade of money pit. It's costing all the old money, okay? And I'm going to bring it to you with a fax. And uh, I went to the cemetery 
and talked to Earl Lee. And he said, Larry, I'm coming back. And we need a lot of soldiers like you. And I said, Sheriff, I'm with you. <clears throat> is my three minutes is up? Okay. Well, next week will be the report that will be a good getter. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierce. We'll take this matter under advisement. Board well, of Commissioners, before we move into our presentations, I just want to say that I respect your comments and I want you to ask questions as we address the needs of our government. However, I ask that we show an improvement with our self-imposed time constraints during uh, your deliberations, or I will have to move towards time limit sanctions uh, utilized by the Congress and the Senate to run this meeting. The, the administration has taken giant steps in elevating our transparency, but in the same disposition, our board meetings must align with our purpose by engaging fundamentally clear and concise discussions in order to hold the attention spans of our leaders ship team and our citizens in the room and those who are watching my TV. And it's certainly me. I'm trying to do a better job of managing these meetings. So if you could just help me, I would greatly appreciate it. Our first presentation today is review of Coast to Coast Prescription Discount Program by our Director of Human Resources, Fred Perry. He's not here, so we'll move on to the next. <coughs> Uh, our next presentation is the Carmel uh, the Standard Operating Procedures Policy Review Initiative. Uh, Tiffany Stewart, Standard Director, External Affairs. Commissioners, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, Director of External Affairs. Um, and I am here with the presentation today about a uh, 2018 Douglas County comprehensive review of existing standard operating procedures and administrative policies. Okay. The purpose of this comprehensive review will be to take an in depth look at existing department standard operating procedures and administrative policies. Two, number one, determine if a standard operating procedure or policy is ne still needed or if it should be combined with another policy. Number two, to determine if the purpose of the goal of the policy is still being met. And number three, to determine if changes are required to improve the effectiveness or clarity of the policy. Um, and the fourth reason is to ensure that the appropriate education, monitoring, and ongoing review of the policy is occurring. Um, standard operating procedures and policies should align with the county's mission, vision, and values. Um, standard operating procedures and policies should characterize relationships and control measures. And they should also answer the following questions. Who does what? Who has what role or what person is responsible? What do they do? What are the tasks, the frequency of those tasks, and to what standard or criteria are they measured? And then what is the outcome when they do it? What are your deliverables, your measures, your objective results? Why is it important to initiate the comprehensive review? Outdated policies can leave the county at risk. Old policies may fail to comply with new laws and regulations. Regular reviewing policies and procedures will keep the county up to date with regulations, technology, and industry practices. Policy review ensures that the county's policies are consistent and effective. Um, so the approach. Um, this review will require the cooperation and participation from all department directors. These policies will be identified by the department directors of the designated departments. The department directors will examine their policies and procedures and provide comments in a word format document. The department director will be responsible for aligning the standard operating procedures with best practices with the changing environment. So each department will provide a copy of these policies or procedures to the Department of External Affairs for review. Once these policies undergo review, the Department of External Affairs will provide a status update to determine the next steps for revising, editing, and updating any outdated policies to the county administrator. Any significant changes and updates to the policies deemed necessary by the county administrator will be reviewed by the legal department and if necessary will be presented to the Board of Commissioners. Um, commissioners, you also have a 
copy of the policy review checklist. This is a checklist that each department will receive to be able to make an assessment on whether or not their policies are um, up to date and compliant. Some of the things on, these on the checklist are, um, is the policy consistent with the core values, principles, missions, and strategic plan of the county? Have there been any deviations from the policy in the past year? And if so, were those deviations significant enough to um, consider revising the policy? Is the policy consistent with current technology? Does the policy comply with current legislation? Are there any contradictions? And should the scope be modified? So to whom or what it applies? Should that be modified? So some of the possible outcomes. Um, the first possible outcome is that the policy is, <coughs> works as is, and there will not be a need to make any adjustments. The second outcome is the policy is outdated and will need to be updated, eliminated, or combined with another policy. Um, there may also be small changes that require adjustments to language or phrasing. And in some cases, there will be, um, that have changes to laws and regulations, there may require a more involved process that will include input from the legal department. The timeline for this process, um, the review process will begin November 1st, and the review process is estimated to be completed by December 31st. Um, some of the goals of the comprehensive review, um, once the policy review is updated and finalized, the policies will be distributed to the employees of the designated departments and will be placed on the website. Uh, the policies will re be reviewed annually by the department directors, the Department of External Affairs, and a designated poli policy review committee if the commissioners and the county administrators see fit. And then ultimately, these policies will, will align with the forthcoming Board of Commission strategic plan process that will begin in January of 2019. That's all I have. Are there any questions? Any questions from the Board of Commissioners on this? And I can just kind of tell you a little bit. I sent you all an email regarding this. So this I sent you an email uh, last week regarding just my intent to look at the policies within the organization. I had an opportunity to look at just one of our uh, departments and I noticed that the date on the policy was about 11 years ago. So I said we need to, it's just, just part of organizational process, just revisit them and just say revise or you may not do anything to them or update. But I did send the Board of Commissioners an email, so just please take a look at those. Uh, Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm actually encouraged, um, you know, being here for almost 10 years. Um, for us to be at this place where we're looking at more of a comprehensive approach to our policies. Um, sometimes we get comfortable uh, in the way things are, the way things have been done, and, and not recognizing that the macro environment has shifted. Um, it's, always, um, it's always prudent to, from time to time just to revisit things. Doesn't mean, mean that things need to be changed, but then it gives opportunity for it to do so. Um, uh, and Madam Chair and I had had this conversation recently because one of the goals, and this is really for my peers, one of our fundamental goals is what we set budgets and we pass what? Policies. We get behind policies. And, I, and I'll be short with my commentary because this is something that, you know, we've been looking forward to to really, you know, there's the administrative side and then there's the legislative side. Two distinguishing different places. And this is where we, we show up every, what, two, two weeks and stuff and we weigh in. We're policy setters. Right, so obviously this, this is going to get us busy. But what I'd like to do, Madam Chair, is just to clarify to the extent that what I'm hearing is that this is strictly departmental. Uh, obviously, this is not local legislation. Obviously, I don't hear an ordinance review, which is uh, something that we would go take on. But Ken, is there a, this is more of a, a legal question. Like, for example, there's a purchasing, and Bill, don't pick on you, but I'm just using this easy for me. There, there's, there's a purchasing policy that's in your department. You know, I've, I've got a copy of those. <coughs> and in that case, is that something that's done by purchasing alone, or is that something that ultimately needs to get to the Board of Commissioners? I mean, do you have a matrix? Do you intend to put a matrix in place to say, okay, when do we need to get involved and when don't we need to get involved? I guess I'm trying to hear that. Well, I think that's up to y'all how you get involved. If it's purely administrative and not an ordinance revision, it could be handled by the county administrator and his department heads. If it requires an ordinance change, it has to be handled by y'all in public hearing context. So I think it sort of depends on what the rewrite is. If it's purely purely process and not substantive ordinance, then it's it sounds like it may be administrative, but Bill, I'll defer to you. I agree. Yes. I agree. So Bill, you got a purchasing policy and I'm just <coughs> one. 
Is this something that you would just handle within your department, or is this something you think that needs to be floated to the Board of Commissioners? <coughs> um, if it affects... Use contracts. The, uh, contracts. If it, if it affects... Well, uh, any contract has to come before the Board. <coughs> so that's... We're not going to change that. Right. right. And it's... Uh, the uh, Madam Chair has to sign those contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, she's the authority within the county that has that right. Uh, so, uh, and that's working well. I don't see a need to change that. Um, the other would be the level of authority for approvals, you know, for purchase orders and purchases and things like that. Uh, we may want to look at that. Uh, but uh, those okay. are the but things any that... any changes to those items mm -hmm. like that would require board commissioner's approval. Exactly, okay. because that would feed back into the uh, approval of purchases. Okay. All right, and I'm going to, uh, Madam Chair, request we'll keep our comments short. It sounds like this is primarily administrative. They may reach the Board of Commissioners to yes, get involved, but um, I yield. I'm done. Yes. Thank you. Primarily housekeeping from the administrative side, so we can look at our standard operating procedures and just how we function day to day. And it's not bad to have those. So you could, if you have new hires and new employees coming, you have something to help, a guideline for them for the staff as they come forward. And it's just good to have those policies reviewed once a year. That's annually what I'm typically re uh, accustomed to. <coughs> Any other questions from the board before we move on to the next one? Commissioner Mitchell? Just one. So I heard a lot to just a moment ago. So shouldn't that, and you might want to just weigh in on this, shouldn't that go through the administrator, the county administrator, versus, I don't know, I don't want to put this load on you, to, to kind of say, oversee what that is. But I'm just, my thought process is, that's what we got the county administrator here for, is to oversee policies and procedures from departmental. <coughs> so if there's a purchasing concern, I think this, my thoughts are, it would be Mark who would kind of follow that And he is, that that's what I'm saying, ultimately it's Mark, but she, we still gotta go back and look at some of the policies that are out there, review those books to give you an idea. I looked at a couple of policies that are sitting out there, standard operating procedures. Uh, they've just been sitting there since 2004. I know things have changed since 2004, so it's just that and the county administrator is definitely involved. His name was actually on the PowerPoint. You yeah, want to respond? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, yes. let Commissioner Mitchell finish. Go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, and according um, to the, um, the information that I just provided, Basically, what my responsibility would be would be more so compiling the information, and then once I compile the information, the policies and the comments by all of the departments, I'm going to present the, give that information to the um, county administrator, and then he it, it, he will be the person who makes the decisions on what needs to be updated, yeah. what needs to be sent to legal, what needs to go to before the board of commissioners. I'm more of a facilitator of getting the information Understood. together for the county administrator. Understood. <clears throat> my thought process is that would automatically go to Mark <clears throat> anyway. Maybe with you and he kind of teaming up on this, but not going to you then him to decide on what consolidation or what information that you consolidated. Not to not to add to your to your job and duties and no responsibilities. But I thought that's what he's here for. And if it's not, then maybe I got something wrong. Help me out with that. I don't think you have anything wrong. I okay. think that it's just a process of trying to make sure that all this information is compiled <coughs> by Mark. She reports to Mark, so of course right, she's working. Right, that's my thought. So, yeah, she so she's working. Mark, so. so she's pulling all the information together. He's well aware. I sent him the email as well. So he's going to help. She's going to facilitate the information, get it to him. He's going to make the final decisions on policy revisions, changes. But all this information has to be pulled. But not policy changes. We'll make I mean, a standard operating. Right. Mm -hmm. Standard operating procedure changes. Mm -hmm. Right. As to what that is. Right. So you are engaged with this whole thing. Yes, yes he, and, he's and I'm not going to take away or, or, or take anything away from what you're doing, and that's great. But I, I'm, I'm more concerned with what is what is his job. <laughs> oh yeah, he's but engaged. I, I can okay. There's actually a code that defines his job, and he is responsible to y'all and the chairman for the day-to-day -day operations of the county, including department heads and the efficient administration of their policies and correct. whatever. Mm -hmm. So he has to be in the clause somewhere. Yeah, he's and in there. To all recommendations, all these policies, standard, standard operating procedures will go through me, and then the, you know, I'll make recommendations. Period. And, and your slide said that, that it'll go through Mark. She said that on the slide. 
Yeah. Well, maybe I heard something wrong. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I, I won't be making any decisions about what will be uh, um, eliminated, or I will just be giving that information to the county administrator. And uh, can you roll that back to the slide that it says that, so we can give this commission clarity? <coughs> Because you said that it would be going through him. It's a lot of work to get. Is it the last piece? So, all? yeah, it's, it's here. And it just, so That's one. The bottom. Yes, the bottom so all significant changes and updates <clears throat> to the policies <throat> deemed, I can't see past well, it. Well, actually, <clears throat> once the department's given me the information, I'll just go through and review it, put the information together. Then the information will be, um, I will provide all the information to the county administrator, who will then um, determine what is outdated, what it needs to be. Eliminate let me stop you there. Okay. Let me just stop you there. I, I get it. You're trying to consolidate information, but I think he's got to be the point person versus you being the point person in the whole makeup to to assure that when there's an issue with with procedure, I'm coming to him, yes. even about you and what yes. you got as your department that you run. Right. So that's what I'm trying to make sure I'm looking out for clarity. Mm -hmm. Is Mark is in the fold. Mm -hmm. If he's in the fold, uh, I'm okay with that. But Mark should be receiving with you mm -hmm. all of the information. Yes. Uh, not separating, deciphering, or deciding on what to give to Mark. Right. No. Yeah, you're Whether correct. the department head gives something good, bad, or indifferent, mm -hmm. Mark's, Mark needs to get all that information because <coughs> Mark will be the point person that I come to because I don't deal with staff. That's correct. So that was just my clarity. Yes, now, sir. Uh, again, I'm not trying to create a, a unique moment here, though. Mm -hmm. I, I just thought with clarity that that's Mark's job to assure that the policy, not policies, but the procedures of departments whom report to him as to what that information is and how it's done. So. And I think that is hers is more. Uh, fact gathering or getting the information so we can get it in his hands because it's a <coughs> it's a voluminous amount of uh, work that's out there. She'll just be the person that bring it to him. But Mark is well. I, I, I think you go. may not hear what I'm saying. Though. I get this. But he will, he will he will he will lead it. He will. He, okay. He'll be much. In, well, let me say this: We haven't done this in uh, probably over ten years, and this is a a huge effort for this county. And we need to look at policies, and we will do that. And I appreciate that. Yes. So this is this is huge, and uh, the county administrator will be our uh, uh, nu nucleus of this project. But his person that reports to him will make sure that she get all the information because he can't do it by, by himself. It's a lot of work out there that needs to be done with these policies. In fact, I would like to see a policy review committee. Uh, we need a policy committee uh, co review committee because there's so many out there that it's going to be more than just uh, the. <clears throat> county administrator looking at him, but looking at those policies, but he is ultimately responsible. So, no. any other questions yeah. before I move forward? I wasn't done. Okay. 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 <laughs> so, <laughs> it might get it. <laughs> um, I, I get it. I understand. I just want for clarity that Mark is whom we as commissioners. Absolutely. Okay. And I agree. But, 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 so, so, with that, no matter how much information is gathered, <coughs> to me, I would have kind of understood a little bit better. And this is kind of all new to me, though. Uh, and, and yes, it's probably a good idea to review procedures. I totally agree. And we do that where I work annually. Mm -hmm. yeah. However, but the point person is the county manager, in this case, in point, whether how he wants to gather the information, whom he wants to kind of assemble the information and how that process goes, but he needs to be tasked and held accountable for that, not <coughs> Tiffany. And I don't think Tiffany wants to be held liable for that type of a thing. And I don't think she can. I don't think she can get tasked. <coughs> so but with that, Mark, for clarity, I'm assuming you, you're on point with whatever this procedure process of your departments. I'm assuming that you're on point with when you're going to get the information, what kind of reporting back to us as a board, what that looked like and administratively and all that kind of good stuff. Yes. Although this is relatively new to me too. I just okay. got an email when y'all got it. Okay. Just, I'm glad I'm glad I'm glad I'm okay. Okay. But the my understanding the standard operating procedures and or policies are due by November 1st. 
so that we can review those and hopefully we'll have those ready. Any Is changes. that a realistic date though? I mean, that's, that's pretty tight. Yeah. But um, we're going to shoot for that. It's, it's that's when it will start. Um, the oh, process okay. will start November right. 1st. Mm -hmm. And all the information that I receive I will, I will be given to the county administrator. So I'm not making any decisions. And I got that. And, and, and I'm not, don't, I'm not, you know, I'm trying to create a question with you. And it's not. I, I just know whom I kind of look for and seek the information from, and that's the county administrator. So if you kind of know where you're going, what this is, uh, and, and try to meet uh, Madam Chair's uh, requests uh, in 30 days. I'm just no, 30 it's, days. the deadline is December 31st. Okay, so okay. we've got a time frame. Uh, I saw November 1st in there somewhere. That's, that's why I saw November 1st. It starts <coughs> November 1st and ends okay. December 31st. Because we talk about procedures, and we talk about a whole lot of stuff. I mean, from parks and rec to, to, to programming to finance to, I mean, just, that's a whole lot mm -hmm. that's being asked. And I just don't. Plus, that's during budget time. You send it, so so that, that's a whole lot. I, and I'm, I'm not saying that you can't or you, you who should or shouldn't. It's just that I think there's a whole lot to ask for in such a short window and to get it right. So. Yeah. Some um, might take longer than others. Yeah. And, oh, I and, know. And certainly, I'm flexible. I'm flexible. I, 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 I know it's going to take a lot longer than others with everything else coming. The day to day doesn't stop. Oh, yeah. That's right. Okay. So, all right. I yield back. Commissioner I retract. Okay. okay. Uh, Commissioner Yider. <laughs> I think what the commissioner was saying is that uh, the vetting of any information <clears throat> should be on his shoulder yes. because of uh, his. And I've always been confused about this grant form because the department heads do the grant, so why do you sign off on them? Um, well, that, are you that's telling that's them not to apply or to oh, apply? Oh, no, no, no ma'am. I, I don't have that authority. So it says it required internal affairs signature, yes. and I don't understand that. Well, the purpose of that, according to the grant development handbook, is to just be able to, be able to make sure that we're keeping up with the grants, what's coming in what, as far as grants. So that's why the form is required to be sent over, so that way I can keep a record and we can just say this is the information that was provided. I don't have the authority to tell. But is it that put in the minutes, you know, um, when we approve it or mm -hmm. vote on it, it's part of the minutes. So it just seems a little redundant. Well, but it, I just wonder, are you telling them they cannot apply? No, ma'am, I don't have that authority. Or they can apply? No, ma'am, I don't have the authority to tell a department to apply or not to apply. What that is, it's more of a uh, document that helps keep up with the with the what grants we have going on. This is it's clearly for that purpose. So we can have the information on who the grant is for, the grantor, the information to contact the grantor, what date that it was applied, what date they received the authorization that they were accepted. It's it's more of a just information keeping. But up. do you keep uh, a <clears throat> running total of the grants? Yes, ma'am. I guess Mark. Oh, I have a, I have the run I have I have it in my department. She's over grant administration. Yes. So I just keep I have all of those forms. I keep them so that way if you know I need to calculate the total at any time I can give it to you. And uh, do you keep up with the renewal date or the time that uh, we would reapply for a grant? Well, I have a list of grants that the, what we've um, applied for over the last year and a half since I've been here. And, and things like that. But typically what I do is I just, the departments that apply for the grants, they let me know. And if there are grants that I see that the departments apply for, I'll send that information to them. So it's, it's my job to kind of find grants for departments. So I send those to the departments and say, hey, this is a grant that I feel like would fit your department, like the grant that's on the uh, agenda agendas today. I found that grant, I sent it to the department, um, spoke with Judge Peggy Walker, we determined that it was a fit got the information to them. We all compiled a whole bunch of different information and then I submitted the grant to um, the agency. So part part of your job description is to be seeking grants yes. for all departments, road department, mm -hmm. whatever. Yes, any any grants that Parks I have. and rec. Yeah, it says senior citizens. Continuously seek grant um, grant funds for good count. Yes. Okay. I get back. Okay. We'll move on to the next. Are we I, I just want to volunteer, make sure I'll be, I'll be on the policy committee for those who reach the Board of Commission. That's all. Yes. Okay. And these are just, like I say, right now, standard operating procedures and those ones ago. And certainly, I'm 
very fluid with the dates, but I wanted to put some type of parameters around it so we can move forward. We hadn't looked at them in a while. So let's move to the next item. The next item is uh, review of Coast to Coast Prescription Discount Program. Uh, Director Perry, he's here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, Director Stanley. Madam uh, Chair and Board of Commissioners, I don't necessarily have a, uh, a presentation. Just wanted to come for informational purposes to talk about the Coast to Coast uh, <coughs> Discount Program to mm -hmm. let our employees, as well as the, uh, the greater Dis uh, Douglas County citizens know that we do have a discount program in place. Mm -hmm. And this was something that was started back in 2016 under uh, West Allen's uh, uh, tenure. This was something we got connected uh, with a program called Coast to Coast uh, Prescriptions. Uh, this is a program that's uh, backed by ACCG and it's made affordable to all counties uh, throughout the, uh, the state of Georgia. Now what this is, it's a discount program for prescriptions, for dental, for vision, uh, even for veterinary services. So we have a card here that you present at the time of service. And we have these cards available in the, uh, in the Human Resources Department. You present this at the time of service and you actually see if this discount program would be greater than your, uh, your actual medical plan. So you present this card along with your, uh, your medical plan and the actual uh, uh, pharmacy will let you know which, which uh, discount is greater. So I want to bring, uh, just bring this to light. This has been something that we've been a part of since 2016. The program hasn't been as prevalent, but uh, through our conversations, we want to make a uh, kind of a relaunch of sorts just to, uh, to, to magnify this program and make sure that everyone knows that it's available. Now, we have distributed cards to various departments that have a lot of public contact within the county, uh, in parks and recreation, uh, transportation, uh, there are a couple of other uh, departments where we, we've dropped off cards, so we want to make sure that the, uh, the Douglas County citizens are aware of this program. Um, and it's really good, uh, all of the, uh, pretty much all of the major pharmacies that are here in Douglas County, Publix, Kroger's, Walmart, Sam's, they all honor this discount card. Um, and from what I'm told, there are up to 75% discounts on certain uh, generic and brand name prescriptions. So just wanted to make you all aware of that and, uh, and continue to push this program. We're going to be talking about this during the open enrollment period as well to make sure our employees know that it's available. Mm -hmm. And um, let's see if there are any other things. The card is good for the entire family, so the entire family just needs one card. Um, again, it's up to 75% discounts on brand name and generic uh, prescriptions. Um, let's see here, no card, no paperwork to fill out. All you need is this discount card. It's just a little bit of information that you fill out on the card. But uh, that's pretty much it. It's pretty simple and uh, the rewards can be uh, fairly, fairly substantial. Okay. So glad we were able to that information off. Certainly ask about it because uh, Fulton County has launched that coast to coast uh, pro prescription program and certainly Douglas County, we are competitive. I wanted to know if there was anything available. Didn't realize it was sitting in a box, but it's now active. We want our citizens to have a privilege of all citizens uh, to this uh, discount prescription. And so thank you so much for rolling that out. The press release will be uh, released by our communications today, today yes, uh, to allow our citizens to know. And also our employees, this is a great yeah. benefit. So we really mm -hmm. appreciate this. Also want to highlight that there's no uh, expiration date for the card. Uh, there's no minimum time or maximum time so you can utilize it. So. Okay, thank you so much. Vice uh, Chairman Robinson. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you bring up a good point. And this is, and I'll put this out to the, to, to the administration, which is, you know, our connectivity to the public. We make assumptions that the public is aware whether <coughs> they are or not. Um, we, we put demands on the public, well, you need to get more involved, but yet government is not the most friendliest of things. Usually your contact is because something you've done wrong, whether it's enforcement, whether it's judicial, um, oh, I, I've got a DMV, maybe it's a licensing, so it's like a big public regulatory. It doesn't, it doesn't interact with government in a, in, in, in a traditional sense. 
Yes, we're creating things like citizens' academies to allow people to come in through a positive way but, but, <coughs> and, and to learn more about government. But the majority of the people, forget the activists, the majority, they're sleeping there in their own world. And so they don't know a lot about, well, how do you not know about this? And it's like, well, we're in our own, we're in a silo. Mm -hmm. 8700 Hospital Drive. I say that to say, and I'm sure I'm just asking the question, which is, how do we do better in ensuring the people that need this gets this? Everybody doesn't go to our website. Mm -hmm. It's not in their world. I mean, you, everybody knows you're in your own microcosm. You don't do this unless you work here, right? You have your own. So how, how do we do better in getting this out in the hands of the people? Because you point, we've had this before. We had this very conversation. We had this during the recession when people really needed this car um, and really could have been from it. So, I mean, it's more of a challenge. I don't have a question, but it's like, how do we, what is the strategy to get, I mean, I hear what you're saying, the normal transportation, normal, the, the normal outreach, but I'm sure, how do we reach the, people, the masses? And I just, I don't know what the answer to this, and I'm, I'm open, but I would like to see that we really make a push, not just to say a press release when people ain't gonna see it, they ain't gonna know my news feed, I'd have missed it. If I don't see that, what's happening, because I've got a thousand emails, I miss it. And I don't want us to be delusional about because we do something that we reached the people and that they really got it. So, I you? <coughs> allow my uh, communications director to respond how you're gonna reach them. We have a plan to do so. <coughs> Thank you, Director Martin. <laughs> sure, good morning, Madam Chair and Board of Commissioners. Um, I'm just returning from some time off, but uh, upon re reading my emails, uh, we are working on a press release currently, my department is, that will be disseminated today. In addition with the press release, we plan on a systematic approach in alerting the public. In addition to the press release to the media, which we have today, in addition to our website, where there will be an article, in addition to Facebook, where we'll be utilizing <coughs> social media, Douglas County Happenings, we also plan to email nearly 10,000 of our subscribers to Douglas County as well. We also plan on repetition. So it's just not today, but next week in terms of a systematic approach. We also plan to encourage those who have shows on DCTV 23 to utilize this as well. I've already discussed with Director Perry to be a guest on one of our shows to address mm -hmm. matters of such. So I just wanted to share our systematic approach from the Communications and Community Relations Department on how we plan to share this information. And then also Chapel Hill News and Views is going out in December. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Commissioner Mitchell, I saw you here first. I'm sorry. Um, so, <laughs> uh, just want a quick, uh, good job uh, trying to get the information out there, but, you know, hopefully the Sentinel, Leah sitting in the room will be more than willing to, to take a press release of that caliber and let the general public know. I want to add, though, um, this is not, this is not new. This is not a new program. Or what's what's new about the about this one than the one we we had before that was rolled out? Is there some difference in the two? Or well, is, it, is it's the, the same, same one? It's the same one. Okay, all right. Because right. this is not new. No, the, it's the, not big, new. the biggest the, the concern is not too many people used it. So, you know, adhere to it or or took advantage of it. Mm -hmm. Because this is I mean this has been around for a minute. Mm -hmm. And so there's, no, there's nothing new about it outside of trying to get everybody made aware that here is an opportunity for you to get some discount on your, on your meds. And, um, uh, I don't know what kind of cost that they would incur in all of this, but I'm assuming all that was within the information that you, that they, once they kind of get on this particular program, yes, sir. Will determine what those numbers are. Right, right. So. I and it depends, it depends on what the prescription is right. and what have you. Right. right. But I just want to make sure it's clear that we 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 took ownership of this several years, a couple of years or so ago. Mm -hmm. It's just that I'm assuming we probably did a poor job 
because you want to blame anybody. A poor job at communicating this to the general public, <laughs> right? Not that this program didn't exist, it still exists, and, it, and don't know how many will jump on. Do you have any numbers of, of previous? I mean, previous uh, yeah, utilization? Years. Yes. Well, not, not communication, but that maybe those that jumped on board on the bandwagon of doing this or, or you know, getting um, the discounts. I can get numbers. Uh, actually, we do have some numbers, uh, and I can get those to you. And, and previous years. Yeah. Now, I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about other counties within Georgia that have utilized this no, program. I'm talking okay. about those okay. with us. Okay. Numbers that we did whenever we wrote it out before. Okay. When West was here. Okay. Um, did we activate it? Yes. Yes, yes, we did. Yes. From, we did from yes. talking with yeah. the representative yes. from Coast right. to Coast, mm -hmm. yes. from Douglas County as a whole, uh -huh. not Douglas County government, but right. Douglas County had uh, poor utilization of this. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not be, you know, sometimes using your own insurance card is cheap. Right. You can use one of the Understood. others, though so it may not be a reason <clears throat> to use the card, but it's available if you do. Understood. I, I mean, I just. Just kind of would love to see some yeah. numbers to say, you know, 20% of Douglas County has used it, or 1% used mm -hmm. it during mm -hmm. the time frame when it, when it rolled out the first time, and, and hope that we communicate better with those that are hopefully around now that might need it. Uh, and it may be that those that got insurance don't need it, don't want it. Don't, it, it costs them, it's, it's cheaper for me to use, to use Blue Cross Blue Shield. Right. And I, I would hope that those who do have insurance would take the card anyhow okay. and present it along with their insurance card Got to it. find out which one is greater. Got it. Because uh, from the uh, the conversation that Mark and I had with the with our sales representative, he said that in a lot of instances, the discounts that you receive with this card uh, is it's actually greater than your insurance discount. Got it. And, and again, that's educating the general public to know that, and to include the, the employees of that county, kind of to, to do them both and see which one is a savings. Right. Okay. I do. Commissioner Yeah, my uh, question was answered. Uh, my, my question was answered uh, because I was curious about uh, how we're going to judge effectiveness of communicating in the community if we don't have numbers. Right. So apparently we can get numbers. So that's 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 that would be a good way to uh, to gauge uh, effectiveness. Uh, the other was just a, just more of a, a statement. You mentioned that the information would be going out with the uh, Chapel Hill News and Views, and that's good. But uh, that thing's awful thick, and uh, sometimes you just kind of glance through it and you miss things. You miss it. Yeah, I mean it's you know it's it's very uh, valuable and, and and worthy, but uh, you can you can very easily miss things in there. Uh, Chapel Hill News and Views, by my experience, has been very effective and fairly cheap using mm -hmm. inserts. In other words, putting a flyer mm -hmm. in the plastic bag ab about this program. So that, that might be something. Uh, yeah. I'm just whispering in my ear that they don't do that anymore. But maybe they would. Maybe they would do it for. Uh, I'm trying to do it. Maybe they would. Uh, maybe they would do it for for uh, as a public service from a county government. So, I yield back. Did you hear that communications director? Yes, ma'am. So, <coughs> Commissioner Geiger? Yes, um, we have like three pantries here. We have the care place. Mm -hmm. Seems to me that those would be ideal places, places. to distribute mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. flyer right. or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. We, we uh, also, uh, Madam Chair, we have a order <coughs> in for additional cards. So we're expecting a large shipment of cards to, uh, Thank you. to come in and distribute the ones that we have right now. Mm -hmm. So possibly uh, by, by the end of this week, we'll have a new shipment of cards. And we can very well give a, uh, uh, a, a number of cards to those pantries that you speak of. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think there's three in the mountaintop and the one on Highway 5. And I think there's one on 92. Mm -hmm. So we still yeah. have that. But, uh, and then the care place also. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you. I yield back. Thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Commissioner uh, Geyer made me think something. Uh, it's pretty effective to, if you're disseminating information, mm -hmm. is to get them in barbershops and uh, beauty salons if, if they will let you. And I think mm -hmm. in a case like this, they will. So that would kind of be a challenge for each commissioner to, to uh, distribute these things into the beauty shops and, and barbershops. So okay. I yield back. Thank okay. you. Okay. I'm going to move forward. Okay. Thank you. Okay, We're thank you so much. Uh, next we have <coughs> a SWAST update, Mr. Gable.
Let me move that to the left. Okay. Mr. Gable, could you move the podium to the left a little bit, please? Get it moved. It's covering screen for people on this side, right? Uh, good morning, Madam Chair, <coughs> members of the board. Good morning. My name is Terry Gable, and I'll be here uh, to uh, talk about the October update. Uh, we'll re I'll be reporting on the August revenues and for work through September. And with that, we'll, we'll get started. So this is our pie, our pie, our pie chart showing the, the three program elements. Uh, the main thing to look at here is the, the total revenues that we've built out so far. It's about 13% of the program. We're still right at $10 million um, of invoices that have been approved. We've got some uh, some bigger numbers coming in towards the end of the year, so I expect that to grow, um, particularly with the, uh, the radio system. Uh, this is broken out by program element. Uh, fire and EMS, about $4.4 million is what we've, we've spent to date. Transportation is right at four million, and then finally parks and recs. We're still on the four hundred thousand dollars, and we've got a lot going on, as most of you know, with parks and recs. Uh, we've got a project just started construction, and it's got a lot of design work going on, and that's keeping the numbers down. But uh, again, Gary's going to have a lot of work coming up towards the end of the year. Now, getting into the revenue sum. Um, so, good news again for uh, August. The revenues. Uh, did drop some about $137,000, but we're still above the, the forecasted uh, model of just a little over $2 million. So hopefully the trend will stay above the line. Um, and if anything, like, like I said, the last report, we're going into the holidays and we'll see that number steadily increase. Just another graphic of it. We were at about $2.1 million for revenues for the month of August. And then look at the, the total numbers for the program, both year one and two. Uh, Splash dollars is about $34.1 million. Um, that's original 17-month projection was $34 million. So we actually, this is the first month that we're actually showing a small overage uh, for the total program. And that's been, that we've been trying to catch up with the numbers that came in last year. So that's good news. Uh, and then the numbers just for year two. Again, 2.1 million was the uh, the revenues the, for the five month period. We're now showing about a, close to half a million dollars of, of overage uh, above what was projected. So again, that's good numbers, and hopefully that that'll that'll continue the trend. Uh, the let me catch up on the slides. So if you remember, in year one, we uh, we paid back about 10 million dollars. For bond obligations, uh, we on track this year of paying about $17.7 .7 million. We made the first payment in October, $1.3 million, and we'll make the, the second payment in April, April 1st of $16.3. So with that, we'll I'll get into some of the project updates. The, the county ride uh, digital radio system. It's, it's continuing to move forward. We're staying within scope and, and budget. Uh, the city of Douglasville, we're still waiting on them to approve an, an IGA for that existing tower. Uh, and we still got three parcels of property that we're, we're either trying to get lease agreements for or moving forward with uh, some either environmental on some of the property. That was in South Douglas, and it's all, all still gas and factory shows. Um, the work that Motorola is doing with the other sites and the towers is moving along very well. They got a lot of work going on with foundations, and we have, we've actually got some tower steel on on sites, and those will be going up soon. So they're they're about 30% done right now with the with the overall radio system. The chief is um, getting in two ambulances this year. They're about 95% complete, and we're expecting those in uh, this month. Uh, the fire truck is 10-8 uh, was the vendor for that, and it's actually in Cobb County. Uh, Chief was telling me that making some final revisions for that, uh, and we'll be hopefully getting that in soon. And fire station three, Titus Construction started work. Uh, they're moving along very well. The main thing we've got to work with staff, and we're trying to get the uh, the lease agreements uh, uh, secured for the temporary housing. Once we do that, 
we got to get it made and get it out to the, the fire station for the temporary housing for the, for the crews. And then last but not least is uh, staff vehicles for, for the chief. Uh, they had three vehicles. One was an expedition at the end, and then we've got uh, F-250s that, that are in now and having some work done on those. <coughs> Moving into transportation, C.W. Matthews is working. They completed uh, North Hilton uh, Road, Kilroy Lane, and they're working now from what I was reported last week on Big A Road, uh, and we received their first invoice. So they're, they're moving along very well, and hopefully the weather permitting, they'll continue that. Uh, these these are just the, the placeholders for the LMIG funds. Miguel was telling me we've got about 16 uh, roads of the LMIG uh, resurfacing that's been completed this year too. And the second slide is it's just a placeholder for the match uh, from the SPLOS funds mm -hmm. for the uh, LMIG. Madam no, Chair. Just one question. Yeah. yeah. We, we, something you said, just want to clarify, because usually when we talk about LMIG, we talk about <coughs> in road miles. So when I heard you say 16 roads, was that 16 miles that we're subdividing once each of the commission districts, or are you saying, what did you just say? 16 roads. Okay. Not miles. We can, I can get you those numbers. <coughs> yeah, I mean, we, please. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Riverside Parkway street lights. If you remember, we had Nadia Fawcett from Greystone was in last month. We had we had taken this out. Apparently, we've got two lights that are not hot that were connected up with another project. So we put it back in. We're still waiting on their final invoice. Uh, and I've been in conversations with them last week. They've assigned a crew to it, uh, but the work, to my knowledge, has not been done and hasn't received the invoice. The Lee Road Extension Study is ongoing with Clark Patterson. Um, no issues there. Miguel was telling me that, that they may they may need a little more time. I need to update the completion date, obviously, uh, but they may it may go towards uh, the end of the year before they complete that study. And then Stuart Mill Road, Jacobs is uh, continuing doing the design work on it. They've completed the survey. Um, they're comparing the work of some of the old files that the project had laid around for a number of years, but based on conversations we've gotten from them, they've had some success with it uh, and move along very well and start to determine some of the, the right-of-way impacts for it. Bright Star Road and John West Road, that's SEI's doing the design for that. Uh, the plan is about 95% complete and we're in, uh, we're in the right-of-way phase. Uh, which is in Mr. Miguel's office, and they're well in the way with that. Sweetwater Church at um, Doris Road. Uh, Pauling County, is a their commission board has approved the IGA, which uh, we needed that to continue moving <coughs> forward. Uh, there's only two easements that we're going to be acquiring for this, this intersection now. Douglas County have one, and Pauling don't have one. Those should go fairly quickly. They expect to be finalizing plans in November, and then hope, I'm still hoping we're gonna have this project let in January, first, first part of the year, if not a little sooner. Chapel Hill Road is, is in the preliminary design still, it's about 10% complete. They're still trying to define the model for that since we've added the curb and gutter sidewalk on the east side. So once we get those preliminary plans done, Miguel, they'll, be, they'll send them over to Miguel for review and. Um, we'll continue moving forward with that project. Highway 5, M Miguel is working on this. We're, we're getting ready to submit for a, a request for proposals for design on it. Um, once he gets it finalized, we'll, we'll get that out on the street. And then the same with Highway 92 and Anna Wakey. We still, our plans are to do a, a, a request for proposal for a scoping study on that. Post Road Bridge at Dog River Creek is uh, GDOT has that moving forward. Their contractor, is, if you remember, that's been uh, awarded to a contract and it's a design bill, and they're moving forward with with other bridges within the state. And I'll keep you updated on when they're in, in Douglas County. 
And then finally, in transportation, is the uh, our sidewalk projects. SEI has these, and they're about 10 percent done with a design on them. Um, and they're all following the same track, all three, the Lithia Springs, Chestnut Lock, and then Manchester High. Those will all be done concurrently at one time. And then transportation uh, equipment. I think Miguel's got, he had two pickups and two dumps, and we, we've received one of the, the the pickups have, have been delivered. No questions, we'll move into, into parks. The uh, Boundary Waters Concession Restroom was was designed by Corey Watkins and we had a kickoff meeting with Integrated Construction uh, the Board awarded for them to move forward with work with, the, with that project last month. Um, they were right now trying to get all the everything finalized to get started. Um, we, uh, they're working with the uh, architect and getting all the materials. Some of those already decided up front, and they'll be get get started uh, real soon here. And we've got Boundary Waters Sockville Lighting um, has been awarded, and I'm going to set up a meeting with West Georgia Lighting. Got that project, and we'll get them started too. They'll be out right beside the construction work going on on their the, uh, concession building. And we'll get the light started real soon. That should be a fairly quick project. Uh, Deerlet Park tennis courts are still in very preliminary um, design stage. Carter and Watkins has that. Gary and I, I'll be setting up a meeting soon with them to start looking at some of the, the visuals on it and getting an update on exactly where they're at, but they are working on it. <coughs> the multi-purpose rec center. We've completed two public uh, information meetings on one on September 20th and then October the 8th. Um, we've obviously got it narrowed down to those three schemes. It looks like it's going to be uh, based on some of the comments we got back, uh, either scheme two or three, and we're going to be working with Gary and getting getting the um, getting the two schemes in, in front of the, the parks committee for review and decision on moving forward with a particular scheme. Uh, the senior centers uh, basically the same. They're starting to track close now. Uh, we've done two public public information meetings, <coughs> September 6th and then one October 4th. We're getting good feedback uh, on both these projects and good turnout to the public information meetings. Um, we're making some final uh, revisions to the uh, to the plans. Uh, Carter and Watkins is doing the senior center, and then we'll 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 start working with Gary on some dates to get it get it in front of the, <coughs> the parks committee. And then the last two is Bill Art and Fair Play. I, these plans are ready to go to um, bid. These, this was done by Alan Bell. I'm doing some last minute um, work with the, the architect on them. We'll be ready to go out for um, out for bid. We, we need we'll, our plans are right now to get the bids in for the con, the yeah. uh, concession <laughs> building and then make a decision on some other improvements that we want to try to do around the park. The Fair Play Park Light replacement, this will go out for advertisement this week for construction. Um, so we're, we're moving forward with that and trying to expedite it um, to get, get the pose replaced as soon as we can. And then the last, I think, uh, miscellaneous equipment for Gary, pretty much everything is in that he's, he's ordered this year, so we're in pretty good shape and, uh, and, and utilizing the monies that we have for, for his equipment. And then with that, I'll close and open it for any questions. Any other questions from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner Mulk here. Question, and this may be more appropriate for our county administrator, but uh, referencing the IGA of Intergovernmental Services or Intergovernmental Agreement uh, with the city and the uh, tower, digital radio tower. Uh, this this is a, a, a crucial project for everybody in the in the county, regardless inside the city limits or outside the city limits. What's 
What's the issue? What's the whole thing? We're talking about it in the executive session today. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that's a good sign. I yield back. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Robinson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I want to come back to just one topic, the, the Lee Road um, master plan. Mm -hmm. You said it may go into the, the first of year. It, repeat that one more time. Now. What yeah, we had, we had projected, you know, we, we, we actually increased the scope of that project initially from a, a small area at Lee Road in uh, 92. We expanded the scope, uh, increased the scope of the, uh, for their study. And they have projected around September, October to complete right. both studies. But that's, that's going to, you know, if you want to chime in on it, but it's, it looks like it's going to be towards uh, November, December before they complete it. The reason I bring up, you, you said December, so it, it, you got to be careful with dates because it, it'll send the wrong, because uh, I heard December or the first of the year. Yeah. And, and so my comment is that this, this area is important. We, we've got um, our senior statesmen is going to be leaving here. And I, and I, I, I would like, the, the senior wrong way, but y'all got my point. Um, oh. It, 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 the, the point is that um, that input is necessary, so I'd like to know. If you said, if they said that the scope of work would take to the end of the year, I'd like to know why is it changing, what is happening. Um, but at the same point, if there needs to be a parallel assurance that input can be gained while we've got a sitting commissioner because our two areas touch in this area, that has to happen. That was the whole point of expanding that. So I, I don't want, I mean, they said they committed to it. So I need to have an accounting for well, why is it changing, but also to assure that we can get the input just in case it is reasonable that we should shift. But I don't want that to just like, oh, we couldn't get to it, my bad, because you over-promised to get a, an expanded scope of work. Not you, but you get my point. Can yep. you take care of that for us, please? Yes, I will. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, Commissioner Guider. Yes, ma'am. Um, Miguel, have you been talking to the owner of the, the shopping center there at Highway 5 and Douglas Boulevard? They do know that we're going to be... Uh, I've had discussions. We're interested in part of that property. Yes, it's got a for sale sign on it, so they are aware of that um, in case they find a buyer for the lot. <coughs> um, the RFP. The um, how long will that take? Probably sometime in, in November. <coughs> November, uh, and this will do the. Uh, kind of lay out what is required for that uh, intersection? That would be to analyze the area and determine the extent of the turn lane, how far back it needs to go. And at that time, that's when we'll start negotiating with the property owner, right? Once, After we get the RFP? Well, we, we can't negotiate until the, the design is well underway so we know exactly what the area that we're going to need is. So it's going to take some, it's going to take the RFP, well, first it's an RFP, uh, and then it's going to take a little bit of design to establish the how far back the, the lane is going to go, and then they, got, they have to start putting together the plans before we know how wide and exactly how far back. So it's probably going to be sometime in the, uh, the first quarter of next year before we define exactly what will be needed. Okay, and uh, the Lee Road expansion, where, where does it fall on the splash list? The study is part of the splash. Where, where is it's it? In, it's under the um, economic development category. Yeah, if, if I may, what uh, initially uh, the small area study uh, was intended to be completed by October and it was expanded and they they thought that perhaps they could get it wrapped up by about the same time they realized that they weren't able to do that however we do not anticipate that it will go beyond this year before they submit the, the report of the entire area and, and in terms of where, where is it? Uh, in, in they said it was under economic development. Yes, yeah, it, is, it is as a lump sum under economic development. So what all falls under economic development? I thought that was to uh, when industries come in and we have to maybe cut the driveway or something like that. I thought that's what that was for. Well, it, it is that too. 
Uh, but uh, but if, we, if we're going to spend it on other things that it wasn't intended on, uh, to be spent on, will we have it left? <laughs> well, uh, Commissioner, at this point, the, uh, the initial expenditure is for the study, for the analysis. So that is a very defined scope. What decisions fall from that is subject for discussion by the board as to how those funds are allocated. At this point, uh, the only allocation has been for the study itself, so $75,000 for that element of the study. Um, and let's go back to um, the Parks and Rec, and I was reading the minutes of the uh, Parks and Rec, and they were talking about the overrun of uh, Scheme 3 of the concession stand at Boundary Waters in, no, Senior Center, Senior Center, I'm sorry, uh, in the tune of 1.2 million. When you say scheme, did y'all, y'all are offering three different drawings and you're letting the people well, and it, pick the drawings or what? And you had it correct, it's the rec center, I'm right. Rec center, yeah. I'm sorry. So what we ended up doing, the initial um, thought about what needed to go in the rec center is what we're trying to make sure we get out to the public, plus all the comments we were, that, that's coming in. But the reality of the what the construction cost is now, about $250 a square foot, it, the cost has grown. I mean, we're still trying to, we're still trying to build what was originally, uh, I think the initial scope of it. So we, the, the architect thought it'd be a good idea to come up with these schemes. And one is just a basic uh, building with the simplest floor paint you can get that, that you could build it just under the budget. The second one is a little bit more trying to achieve the original scope. And it's just, it's actually above the, the budget, of the original budget. And the third is, the, is what had uh, the, the original thought that the program rooms that were, that were needed, the walking tracks, um, it's, it's about a million, 1.2 million over the, but <clears throat> when we did the uh, John Blakely building over here, the Board of Commissioners was just offered a, uh, a drawing, and we really only had one choice. Uh, when you put, uh, I can see what <coughs> needs to go in there then, uh, uh, maybe to the public, but we, do we put on there the budget and what we have to build within that budget? Um, when you take 1.2 million away from um, from the overall parks and rec, you're taking the bottom list of the uh, parks and rec projects, which are the other side of the county. You're taking away the money that was supposed to be for them. Everybody, everywhere I go, they're saying, why is all the construction over on the eastern side of the county? Um, we need to let people think that, that their dollar, that one cent on the dollar is going for the whole county and not just a special portion of the county. And so I would urge the uh, Parks and Recs Committee not to want to go over a budget $1.2 million that's going to take away from the projects that are being, uh, that people think they're getting in their parks on the other side of the county. And um, just kind of realize we represent, when we have our vote here, we're voting for the overall good of the <coughs> county and not just a certain section of the county. So uh, 1.2, when I saw that they were talking about it may do away with Winston, uh, the field at Winston <coughs> or the post road and you know, that's my district, and I need to speak up. We deserve some of this money. 13 million of it's going west, I mean east of 92. Mm -hmm. Only less than 2 million is going on the western side. So, so we I yield back. <coughs> but we did drive, we, I think architect and, and along with Gary's staff, uh, they did a very good job of, of making sure everybody, when we presented it, the floor plans and the and we actually had on the displays the cost, the size, of, you know, the amount of square footage. So the 
when the comments came in, that everybody you know, realized what the cost was and, and the size of the building that was going to result in. Well, you may have to cut down the size. Uh, and that, that's, and, exactly, that's the whole and, thing, of the, that's the whole purpose of the schemes. And that's, uh, like when I built my house, I built within my budget. I knew what my budget was before I approved the plans for my house. So, <laughs> and I think we, we do it backwards. We pick a scheme or we pick a, a floor plan or this, that, and the other, and then look to see what it's going to cost to build that. We ought to set our budget, then build in accordance to the budget. And that's where no decision has been With consideration for inflation, I'm not saying that uh, building costs has not gone up some. And that is one thing that we're, we're climbing uphill with. You know, these budgets were set back in the Gary Kirk from Rome several years ago, and it's you really you, you, you got that you're dealing with plus the the driving of the economy. And okay. It's really escalated as far as uh, the, the low estimates at the time, and then what building materials and labor is running right now. Um, I, and it's going to affect everything. I understand just, you know, about inflation, and it, but well, the fact that there's work out there for people, yeah, <laughs> and which is good. Uh, they raise the prices of them. Uh, but just remember that we represent the whole county and not just east of 92. And I yield back. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on. Commissioner Mitchell has one comment, then we'll move on. <coughs> yes, and, and, and I'll be pretty quick and brief. But uh, yes, we have taken into consideration the entire county. Yes, we understand that the cost of construction. Uh, the real numbers are the real numbers. So between Mulcair and myself, we've actually, you know, it's, it's going to be a unique moment of trying to figure out which direction we go and why. Uh, the good part is we've got some direction of some sort, which is good. Uh, my, only, my only question is, though, uh, you mentioned the uh, sidewalks, uh, the sidewalk projects. Are we, you kind of went through that pretty quick. Are, are we with Lithia Springs and, and the sidewalk? Are they done or are they? <clears throat> there, no, we're, about, we're only about 10 percent done with the design. Okay. So we're, but he's expecting by the within three months to have the design completed. Yeah. You know, they're small projects. Right, 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 right. Um, but right now they're still in the preliminary design stage. They, they just completed the surveys on all three schools. Mm -hmm. Everything's going well. Um, no, no unexpected things have come up. And um, once we get the design done, get some estimates in, we can make a decision best best way to put them out for bid. Yeah, okay. But, but we're moving it right along. The, yeah, the project's moving right along. Mm -hmm. But just in closing, uh, the uh, Parks and Rec Oversight Committee kind of takes the holistic approach. Uh, it, it's not just about one side of the county or the other. It's just that here are some projects that are lined up and, and possibly ready to go. Uh, costs have uh, increased uh, substantially. If we had did this project, maybe what, like what, a year or two ago, we probably could have cut the <coughs> cost could by a third at least. Yeah. However, um, we're faced with the reality: construction costs have gone up, uh, labor costs have gone up, and, and, and the determination <coughs> will not be based on what side of the county it's on. It'll be based on the project itself, understanding kind of what's best for the project and what's. What's the quality approach to the project itself? Yeah. It just leaves them for us. No. <laughs> I, 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 and, I, and I think we, we, we're all concerned about that because yeah. we, we understand <laughs> if, if we take more of the pie on the top end to get a quality project, it may be some that may or may not make the list or you know get down to that list. We, that's all uh, within the scope of what we're trying to deal with, and we understand that. Yeah. OK, so I yield back. Just one, just for the, because he didn't answer the one question we needed. Okay. All right, so to this whole conversation, and it's to the county administrator. So, Mark, we asked for in our last meeting, which was a reset or refresh based on, we had estimates going into Wall Street. Remember, we, we came up with percentages. That's what the public knows. Yes. There's nothing else committed beyond what was that. All of us might have floated a project that we thought that we could offer up to the public but we sold only percentages, mm -hmm. and we offered up maybe we needed a fire station, we needed a tower. Nothing else was sold to the public. Nothing, that's important. But now that we've gotten in this, Mark, you created a list to sort of justify the spend, right? We went to Wall Street, we had to come up with this master list of what, $70 million to $100 million worth of projects with our 
You've now gotten into this two years there's been some inflation both in labor and in construction costs. We all recognize this. What I liked, what we asked for, Mark, and I know you've been out, what we asked for was a reset based on, okay, y'all need to reset these numbers so we can set expectations. We're having these conversations and we're having to keep recalibrating from a, a vote perspective on each project. Just reset the list based on like everything is inflated now. It's more, I mean, that's okay. So what was on the list at the bottom, we know that. We, we didn't guarantee that we were going to deliver this, but let's not be delusional about, look, guys, it's already inflated. My concern is that we blew our budget as it relates to what, about $2 million in, in transportation, Mike? Yeah. Because of bad estimates. We blew it by $2 million. Right. We already had this experience. We're not going to experience this again on this one. So let's go ahead and reset that. I'm sure I know Mark was out, but can we get that refresh, Mark? I sent it, it about two weeks ago. I, I can resend it. No, it's not as much that. You got to bring it to the public. We need to make sure that, okay, not to send it. Can we have a public um, conversation about this list and what it's going to be? I don't want it to be offline. I want a public conversation, Madam Chair. Okay, we'll do it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We'll do that. Mr. Gay. Table. Thanks so much. Uh, board Commissioners, you have your approval of the minutes for tomorrow. Take a peek at those and be prepared to approve. We yep. have three proclamations tomorrow as well, so be prepared to approve those as well. And the public hearing tomorrow, we have a public hearing, and that public hearing will be led by Director Watson. And it, um, we really don't need to get into it unless you want to come and just give us a few words just to kind of give us a little readers digest on it. And then next, I'll move into, I'll talk to the county administrator about this. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We're for the uh, public hearing Water. tomorrow. Uh, we'll have a, a brief PowerPoint presentation, and I want everybody to know that the public hearing that we will have tomorrow and at the next commission meeting will be about the, the basics of the application, the technical aspect, uh, the content of it, uh, the requirements of the application. Um, we won't talk very much about the bus service, the routes, things like that at, at, during the public hearings. This information will come a few weeks later in a series of, of public meetings. Um, we're very close to firming up some things such as, as the routes. Uh, tomorrow at the uh, Transportation Committee meeting, we're going to be talking about what our one-way fare might be, and we're also in the process of reviewing the uh, draft contract that our proposed third-party provider has submitted to us. So, so again, t tomorrow during this public hearing, it's going to be very basic about the application itself. Okay, we look forward to the public hearing tomorrow. Thank you so much, Director Watson. County Administrator, do you have any business? <coughs> um, any business yes, ma'am. Uh, I just want to let the public know that we sent a 500 kilowatt generator to Calhoun County in South Georgia, and it is running an entire nursing home. Right. Okay. So, yes. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. Have you seen any other equipment? Yes, sir. A small generator. They went and they are powering a water system with it, I think. Okay. Uh, in not Glen County, uh, Miller County. So another small generator with Miller County to help with it. System. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Are you finished? Yes, sir. Okay, next we have business uh, items and uh, board of commissioners brief will start and we start with task number eight. Um, authorization to give a notice of intent to the Georgia Department of Education to apply for the 21st Century Community Learning Centers 2019 through 2020 fiscal year 20 cohort to expand the solicitor's office reading program and authorize the chairman to sign all related documents. No matching funds are required. Solicitor. Uh, General Matthew Prohl is here to present. Madam Chair, Board of Commissioners, thank you for having me this morning. Uh, when I became solicitor six years ago, um, I actually have Lynn Abbas, who is my Director of Victim Services, uh, with me today. She is uh, she is the owner of two Greyhounds uh, from the Birmingham racetrack. Not that she's a dog breeder, but she cares <laughs> for direct Greyhounds, and these Greyhounds are retired dogs. Uh, that raced over in Birmingham. And what they do is she's part of a group called the, the Greyhound Rescue Group. And what they do is they take these Greyhounds, they get them trained to be therapy dogs. And once they become therapy dogs, then she's involved with another group called Reading Paws, and they get them certified as reading therapy dogs. And we have had a reading therapy dog in my office 
through the ownership of Lynn since I've been solicitor, and we use that therapy dog in different manners. We've used it within the court system to talk to some of our child victims uh, when they have been faced with uh, having to testify in court. Uh, but one of the main jobs that Cleo, her dog, her first reading therapy dog did is that we used her <coughs> to reach out to um, pre-K programs, uh, elementary schools, churches, organizations, and the whole goal of it was to encourage children to read. And this program is moving along because I think reading is fundamental, reading is important, especially in what I do, and I'm going to give you some information on that. Uh, it, many of you know in 2000, in April of this year, I was appointed to the State Board of Education by Governor Deal to represent our district. And I will mention that on October 29th at 7 p.m. at Douglas County High School, I'm having my annual district meeting. Uh, so I encourage you all to come out there. The information is going out to the Board of Edu Department of Education right now. Uh, I've had an opportunity to speak with many educators about this program, and my goal is to expand the program. And I have expanded the program. I, I have done presentations throughout the state on this program and why it's important. And I'm going to give you a little bit of information today. Why are we concerned? 66% of uh, third graders in Georgia are not reading proficiently. That's what the statistics, the most recent statistics show, 66% of third graders, when they're assessed that they're not reading proficiently on grade level, why is that important? Well, if two thirds of our students in Georgia aren't reading proficiently, that's going to be a major indicator. They're more likely to experience poor health, have discipline problems, become teen parents and drop out of high school. That's why it's important that we need to be concerned about that number. Well, why is a prosecutor concerned about this? And I'm going to tell you why. According to the Department of Justice, 70% of our prison population can't read at the fourth grade level. So if 66% of our third graders can't read professionally, and you take that out to the adult age, 70% of our prison population can't read at the fourth grade level. More than 60% of the prison population are functionally illiterate. And 85% of all juveniles who interface with the juvenile court system are functionally illiterate. Now, that's Judge Walker's department, but it should concern us all. And it should concern me, too, as a citizen, as a prosecutor. Because those that we see in the juvenile court system, we could see them in the adult court system. So let's compare. The third grade population in Georgia in March of 2016 was 138,000. 66% of those is 91,000. So 91,000 of our third graders can't read proficiently on th grade level. Okay. Our Georgia prison populations, the local prison and parole total was 121,000 in 2016. 70% is 84,000. That's a pretty close number. That's only 6,000, 7,000. That's a 6,300 uh, difference in, in people. So we take these numbers, and I argue that's not a coincidence. That's a correlation. So what is our outreach done? Our goal is to get children excited about radio. All right. So I said, okay, what am I going to do? I'm going to put something together. And I started putting something together six years ago because I don't want to see people in the criminal justice system. I I'm tired of seeing the same people over and over again. I'm sorry, I'm tired of seeing the same families over and over again. So instead of just prosecuting people saying, you should do this, here, go to jail, go to probation, that obviously isn't working because their families are still coming back. So we need to do something. And I took it upon myself to do something. We're going to encourage these children to read through a non-traditional tool, which is a dog. We collaborate with individual schools doing reading days with Cleo. And um, many of you have heard earlier this year, we partnered with Winston Elementary. And we identified first and second graders. This is not willy-nilly. We were at first just, we got it off the ground. We were willy-nilly just going to different schools and different organizations and encouraging children to read. Now we're actually doing analytics. And we're partnered with, our first school was Winston Elementary. We started this year. Then we partnered with them. And the, the educators at Winston Elementary identified the first and second graders who are not on pace with their peers, who when we get to the third grade, we're going to say, OK, these third graders are probably not likely going to be reading proficiently at grade level. So we're going to identify them before they get to the third grade. Let's identify them in the first grade and the second grade. Because you know, when I was a, when I was first got in the solicitor's office, I was like, hey, let's get in the high school and tell the kids about the criminal justice system. We realized that that was a little bit too late. And then Brian Fortin, when he was soliciting, he said, I'm going to go into middle school. So we went to middle school. You know, well, it's kind of too late. So as solicitor, I'm trying to get to pre-K and K through three to get these children to read on grade level. 
So we've identified these students, and what, the way the program at Winston works is that the educators identify these children, and they encourage them to read, because obviously they're not getting the support maybe at home, maybe there's a, a, dis, a learning uh, deficiency or learning disability that we need to identify these children, and they're not getting the support at home to read. So what we're using is this non-traditional tool, and their teachers are saying, hey, this is what we're going to do. We're going to encourage you to read, because if you read, and you read more books than your classmates, you're going to get a special prize. And that special prize is to get to read with Cleo on the last Friday of the month. So Lynn, on the last Friday of the month, she takes Cleo, and she goes to Winston Elementary, and they identify six students for that month that have been lagging behind <coughs> their peers, but they have working, been working harder and improving. And then they get to read a book to Cleo. And Cleo doesn't read the book. I know everybody asks, is Cleo read? Cleo doesn't read. And Cleo just sits there and is non judgmental, doesn't bully them, doesn't make fun of them. Cleo just sits there and listens to them read. And the improvement, and, and, and Lynn, I, I got to give a shout out to her. She does this on her free time on the weekend. She goes to all three of our libraries and does reading programs. And you should see the kids, especially kids that are on the autism spectrum, mm -hmm. how their parents bring them and they really improve over a period of month because they're getting this opportunity to read <coughs> and not be judged by their peers. All they have is a sweet greyhound that does this. So we're going to expand this program to other schools. It's really worked. We've done it for about three months and we did a, a, a day and we had all the first and second graders come to the media center at uh, Winston Elementary and it was probably one of the most exciting days I've had in the last six years of my, I mean, I had 200 first and second graders or 100 first and second graders just come and we read a book to them and Cleo was there and they were so happy and it really made their day. So these children that are going to lag behind, they're going to get this opportunity, but we're going to expand this to none of the other schools. And how are we going to do it? We're going to use the data from the Department of Education, from the Georgia Department of Education. We have tons and tons of tons of data and we're going to identify those schools that are have the most have the readers that are struggling the most and we're going to go to those schools first whether it's Eastside or Burnett or Net Wind, we're going to go to these schools or North Douglas where these schools are that we have higher rates of, of, of children struggling at the third grade reading we're going to have a woman expand and we're going to move systematically through each one of our schools and expand this program now I need people and I need some help and I've got a tool and I've got a secret weapon and I'm going to do that if we get this grant I'm going to move in the so uh, that's what we want to do. This grant is a, a, through the Department of Education. It's for after school programs. It's for other programs. And you can, uh, private agencies or private uh, organizations and uh, government entities, which I'm going to apply for it through the Board of Commissioners. And we want to expand this program. We're going to do some exciting things. Um, I have to do a, a, the reason it's before you today. The grant's not due until J January 31st of 2019, but I have to do a, a a letter of intent or notice of intent that I'm going to apply on October 5, October 31st. So that, that's why it's here today. And I appreciate you indulging me and allowing me to put this on the agenda so we can get this because we really need to do this. The whole point is, why are we doing this? When these children in the first and second grade, we don't want to see them in our court system 12, 13 years later. We want them in jobs. We want them raising families. We want them buying houses and, and, and spending tax dollars instead of using tax dollars, they want to give, uh, not spending tax, but giving to the tax system instead of spending tax dollars in the criminal justice system. That's one way we can help do this, and, and one of the programs that I've started doing, and I'm really excited about it, and I uh, hope you all will um, support me in this ever endeavor. Now, let me give you the real deal. The READ program is a national certification founded in 1999, and the mission is to improve literacy skills of children through the assistance of registered therapy teams and literacy mentor mentors. We've got to get some volunteers to be literacy, uh, literacy therapy teams. And Lynn's going to work with me with her organization, but I will give you, I'm not the star of the show when I show up. Let me show you the star of the show. Please. There's Cleo. Oh. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and then there's a, there's one day you can see how excited the children are. This is over at uh, Sheltering Arms over on uh, Longview Drive. We do their, mm -hmm. we, we're a regular a show over there. We come a lot and, and the children just love it. And these are some links if y'all want to do that. And I'll submit this to Miss Watson so y'all can have it in your minutes and you'll have the information. Okay, thank you so much. I'll finish the letter if you have a comment, but thank you for engaging. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Matt, um, 
Have y'all ever reached out to uh, like the life groups at church, churches, because they like to be involved in the community? And several of them, especially the older people, they would probably go up to the schools and have a child read to them. I had a third grade uh, teacher as a very close friend, and she got me to do it. And it, a lot of it, they just need practice. Mm -hmm. They just need to read uh, to someone. And uh, a lot of the churches may have some life groups that could help them that. We have, uh, we've actually gone into churches ourselves as a team, uh, Lynn and I have. We, we've offered it. We, we go through core, core, the people in core, they, they've engaged with us to get, that, get us in churches. But we definitely reach out to all churches. It's, it I'm, just doesn't cost anything. It just takes you know, the, the cost, the, your really, time. The, the, uh, the cost so. really, is time. And really what you have to have is you have to get a therapy team, which means is, is an owner of a dog who is a therapy dog and the person willing to step up and say, okay, I'm going to do this on a regular basis. If y'all know, have been involved with any kind of organizations, it's always the hardest part is to get people to volunteer to do things. So by doing this, we're gonna do some non-traditional things, not just with a therapy dog, but we're gonna use Clio as the, the showcase, is, is the crown jewel, but at the end of the day, there's gonna be some other stuff through this program that we're gonna offshoot the next time. But we'll, we'll definitely reach out to these churches and life groups. My life group. I've got a retired principal and two teachers. I'm going to get in contact with you. So <laughs> Thank you so much. So okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. We're going to uh, tab number nine, authorization to create a new position with the Information Services Department, Title Network and System Security Manager, um, Director Martin. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so what we want to do here is actually, and the reason it's before the Board of Commissioners is, uh, the Network and System Security Manager is not a position that has been uh, in the Information Services Department before. Uh, I think we all recognize the need for additional insight and uh, focus on cybersecurity within the county. Um, October being National Cybersecurity Awareness Month. Uh, do you train? Um, <laughs> We, uh, we think now is a good time to present this. This actually went through the Technology Committee. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to look at during the Technology Committee was, is it is the right thing to do to uh, hire an employee, uh, or is the right thing for us to do to go out and look at a service uh, where service might add some benefit uh, above hiring an employee. Uh, the reality of it is it's just not within the scope of finances for us right now, uh, and we think this is a good first step to uh, start getting us on track for being a little more secure. Uh, another reason that he's going for the committee is um, everybody's agendas, the agenda item should include the new org chart. So this will actually allow us the opportunity to do a slight reorganization with the IT department <coughs> so that we're really putting an emphasis on cybersecurity based <coughs> not only on our individuals but actually on our structure. So. Is that a question? Any questions? Commissioner mm -hmm. Guider. It's not really a question, but uh, Judge Emerson came to the Constitutional Officers Retreat last week, and he spoke on the dire need for us to be protected, our information to be protected. Um, we had Coweta County hat, Fulton County hat, and there's another one, local. So we we City of Savannah. Huh? City of Savannah was one. City of Savannah, yeah. <clears throat> so um, this is uh, very, very important because, um, and it's not just one thing that you pointed out to the committee. It's not just the ha the uh, millennial that's sitting in the basement of their parents. It's corporations now that are, are doing this. Um, they're uh, hacking into this for. Uh, to hold people hostage or for ransom and things like that. But they can do so much damage. Everybody remembers what happened with Blue Clark. I mean, Anthem. Anthem was hacked. Now, and what they did to uh, many of our own employees, they got their tax return and their refund sent to them rather than to the employee. So uh, this is something badly needed, and it's uh, revenue neutral for 2018. <clears throat> and how much will it add for 2019? 
Uh, the additional employee and the, the other things involved in the restructure will increase our salary budget by $24,000 for 2019. For the 2019? Yes. All right. But it is neutral for 2018. Uh, thank you for bringing this to us. And uh, uh, I appreciate everything that Judge Emerson shared at our retreat the other day because uh, this is a very, um, uh, he's a big concern of his. He says if we lost our data, it would you know, just play havoc in the county. So, thank you, Commissioner Thank you, Commissioner Thank you so much. I don't have any other questions. If you don't need, do you have any questions? Okay. Did I have any questions? Did you raise your hand? I did. I'm so sorry. I didn't see your hand. You got to raise it now. Uh, we have one from Commissioner. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm careful. I didn't see you. Yeah, no, thank you, Mr. I'm, I'm careful with our commentary. Like, the, the, there's some things that are, um, you, you think about national security that, that um, they are what they are. All right, so we'll be careful with my comments. But in your mind, and your response is going to be appropriate, um, in your mind um, on how important this is for us mm -hmm. to pursue, um, um, when you talk about vulnerability and that type of conversation, right? Uh, Americans don't tell our um, um, enemies that, oh, you can come down here and come to this the back path, right? Think about the movie 300, right? You don't do that. My question, so I'm, 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 but I, I need to know for the public that, that, okay, is this in your mind as the chief uh, person over our technology, how important it is on a scale of one to 10? Is this important? Yes, this is an absolute 10, right? Because I think uh, she touched on it it used to be the perception was that there was probably some overweight guy sitting in the basement somewhere, right? Or some foreign I understand. group put, of youth. Put, put the doing color to the side. Put the anecdotal to the side. I'm yes. a very so straight this, like. Yeah, this is, there's a software development life cycle that lives around hacking now. It is pulled off by very, um, you know, very well organized, very sophisticated organizations. It's no longer something that we can pretend that we're working hard on. It's something we have to focus on, we have to spend money on, or else we're not doing our citizens or our employees uh, right. Right, so, um, and again, I'm not looking for actual data um, quantified, but have there been attempts on us, like our borders, like, um, that, that's, that's important for me. Every day. Uh, to support something like this. Mm -hmm. Every day. Okay. Right. What do you go back to? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Mitchell. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just add, and I, and, and my apologies for standing on this one. Um, but, but why don't you share with them, because we went through this whole committee structure and, and vetted this to make sure that what we were doing was in the best interest of the county and our technology. So I think this is a huge step in the right direction. Even though I challenged them with the big guy, the guy in the, in the back room doing all these things, but your structure would definitely give us a focus on that particular vulnerability that we could encounter. But we don't, but we, we could encounter. Right, so I'll, I'll try to answer. Our, the way we handle cybersecurity right now is it is the part of multiple people's job uh, that they do in addition to what their regular job is. Right? And so it's not anybody's primary responsibility. Right. Um, most of the people we have right now are worried, more, they're more concerned with break fix. Right? You can't do something, somebody can't work, uh, something's not operationally. Uh, where it needs to be. We're focused on those things. Uh, and when we have time, we spend time working on security. Right. And the world has progressed beyond that, but we have not. Mm -hmm. And so the point of this is to put security out front and actually to restructure ourselves in such a way that things funnel through the lens of security uh, before we ever start the project uh, in technology. <clears throat> and so that structure will be just given a little how look of your organizational chart would consider this, that person, and that person for sure focused in on just that uh, situation alone. Correct. And then the functional groups within our department, like <coughs> networking and sysadmin who currently have part of the responsibility, uh, they would actually report through this new position. Right. Uh, that way, when we're building new equipment, when we're building new infrastructure, uh, the first thing we're thinking about is, are we configuring it to be safe? Are we configuring it to be secure? Not are we doing it quickly? Right. And so I think it's important that at a high level within our organization, we put somebody who has security experience, security focus, and security education 
Mm -hmm. uh, so that we make sure that those are focal points of the way we do things, not extra things that we do when we have time. Mm -hmm. And let's make it clear, this is not 100% uh, proof, mm -hmm. so don't, don't, don't get yourself, don't get your mind mm -hmm. twisted, but uh, at least we're trying to go in the right direction as to what that could be in the event that we were hacked, if we were in that position and needed to kind of do something. We're, we're trying to be proactively now doing these types of things. Correct. Yeah, so uh, last but not least, will you be sending out any any pizza coupons or? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> At least twice a week. <laughs> <laughs> something you can take over. I do. OK, you thank you. <laughs> Madam Chair, uh, one thing we uh, y'all may want to do is have uh, Matt Laverne look at our policies of insurance because now cyber insurance, cyber security insurance, especially from a te technological standpoint, the city of Atlanta has learned a yes. very hard way yes. about replacing equipment and whatnot, and the infrastructure costs and capital mm -hmm. would be devastating to our budget. We may want to have Matt look at what do we have in place, if anything. We already looked at those. Right. So we we actually, respond. Matt did have some coverage in our policy leading up to this year. We discussed it at length beginning this year, and I think uh, we did expand uh, that policy. Mm -hmm. But it's not to say that was also right. kind of anecdotal, and I think that's an important thing about getting somebody on our staff right. who has experience exactly. and education in this, yes. because then there's a, a, a lot more educated conversation that can be had between Matt and this person. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was coming up through technology, uh, virus and those things were actually kind of fun, right? When somebody got one, you laughed at them, and you spent time trying to fix it uh, because it wasn't that big a deal, right? Uh, now, that's completely changed, right? right. This is a business for right. people. And we need to treat it that way. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Explain. Explain why it's a business. You make money doing it. Yeah. It's ransom. You the I mean, systems yeah. are locked up until you pay somebody. Yes. Well, there's that. They, they lock them down to, to get money. I mean, there's an amazing black market for social security numbers, uh, for credit card numbers, and that black market exists, and people are making a ton of money doing it. So they built businesses around. It. And they can also assist the competitors. Yeah, there's that aspect. Mm -hmm. I yield back. Okay. Yeah, uh, to, to, to um, the county attorney's point, when this first, when I got, I, I saw this was coming, I did ask the question of the administration, which is uh, what happens when the bomb goes off and how do we get back online? We don't have the general fund that Atlanta has. We, 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 we just don't. And so we, we can't be delusional about, like, we can't take a hit like this. I know we pay cash as we go, but I mean, to your point, Ken, what you know, catastrophic, uh, you know, reinsurance, something above and beyond, because we got to keep the system working. And so, even if technologically you can get it done, and again, I'm not going to get into our strategy, but I, I guess I had not heard yet that um, while Matt may have looked at it, does the board of commissioners need to sign up on the thresholds for that new insurance provision, Ken? And that's my question. Well, I think it probably needs to get a report from the county administrator on what the status of that coverage mm -hmm. is, if any. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Commissioner Guider. Okay. Russ. Uh, I was watching Mark Levine last night. Love you. But um, he, they were, he had a guest. Man on there, and I can't think of his name, but he was talking about micros. Uh, let's see, I can't even remember what it is. Cyber chasm or something like that. It's going to be safer than the internet. That you you can't get all this information from from the internet. If you hack this place, it's not going to give you all this other stuff. So and it's going to do away with uh, passwords. Praise the Lord <laughs> for that. But uh, it's gonna, it's a new thing that's coming and it's already started. Uh, it's out there, it just hasn't come all the way uh, across the continents and everything. Yeah. But uh, have, are you familiar with what I'm talking about? I'm not My sure. First. I'm exactly sure what you're talking about, but I think Cryptos. Well, so for people, so, oh, so you're talking micro, about. Crypto or something. Crypto, like. I mean, there's cryptocurrency, there's a bit locker, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that's being done with that. Uh, but I, it'll be interesting. The, the thing that people, if you're a real computer nerd, right, quantum computing, right? So quantum computing is one of the things that people are moving forward with right now. Doesn't quite work yet, but as soon as they sort out quantum computing, uh, nothing we currently do for security is going to be worth anything. It'll be able to break 
encryption so fast once it's once this is developed and it's and we're on the cusp of developing quantum computing. Nothing we currently do will be valuable at all for but security. This man was saying this is going to be so much safer. It's going to be so much safer because you don't have all the uh, passwords and stuff like that. And I thought it was very interesting. Um, you, you might can watch it uh, on your computer or something. Yeah, it's just I'll take a Harvard grad, written a lot of books and everything about the internet. He said Google is going to be um, just nothing after this comes in place. Because Google was, it was all set up just for email, you know. Right. Talking about uh, your family and stuff like that. And there was never any security out there until it, we started having problems. So it's very interesting. Anyway, I get back to that. Okay, we'll move right along. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Martin. Next, we have tab number 10, authorization to move the budget and accept the grant award in the amount of $852,536 for enhancements to our Family Treatment Court program requiring a 25% in-kind match, which covers salary and benefits for our peer support specialists, as well as our office space and equipment and authorized chairman to sign all related documents. This is my day. How are you this morning? Hi. We, um, Jill Hobson and I, worked on writing this grant. Um, didn't have any idea we'd end up getting it. <laughs> there were only four grants awarded um, throughout the nation for this particular project. Um, so we got $852,356,000. Uh, it is a grant that is for four years. Um, we are able to match uh, with our in-kind and our current employees so there's not uh, any additional funds that are needed for our match. Uh, we are targeting um, our family treatment court uh, where we work with parents that have deprivation cases filed within the court um, and we work intensively with those families for two years when they're enrolled in our program. Um, this is going to double our capacity to serve clients. We currently have about 20 families that we work with um, and we'll be able to hire an additional case manager and a peer support specialist has already been hired um, to work with them. Very, very good. Um, any comment from the Board of Commissioners? Commissioner uh, I noticed this is brand is, is over a four year period. Yes, sir. Do they do they parse out the disbursements or do you get the money up front or they just you get a check every year for four years? Do you know? Uh, we expand the funds mm -hmm. and provide reports okay. um, quarterly and that will take place through the whole grant cycle. Okay, thank you. I get that. Okay, thank you. I believe this is one of the largest grants you've received so very good. It Wonderful. is. Very <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll move on. Thank you, Mrs. Smith. We'll move on to tab number 11, authorization to purchase a ticket office machine for the Douglas County Transportation Center to be used for the sale of breeze cards for the State Roads and Tollway Authority Express Bus Service. Director Watson. Yes, ma'am. I have some good news about this uh, tab, but first let me give you a little background. Uh, ever since around 2003-2004 when the Georgia Regional Transportation Authority started the express bus service uh, into Atlanta, we've been selling their magnetic strip cards with their branding on it. However, times are changing, technology is changing. Uh, Greta, which is now merged with the State Roads and Tollway Authority, uh, they're starting to sell breeze cards instead of their old magnetic strip cards. Now, uh, for us to sell these cards, we're going to need the breeze cards, we're going to need a change in technology and that's the ticket office machine. Uh, a rider of the express bus service will be able to come into the transportation center and purchase a breeze card from us. Uh, now, once we get this machine, at least uh, in the beginning, uh, we'll only be able to load uh, the breeze cards with CERTA uh, uh, packages, programs. Uh, you will not be able to uh, purchase MARTA products on our ticket office machine to begin with. Uh, that, that may occur in the future, but at least for the beginning, um, 
the tick office machine will only be able to serve uh, express bus customers. Now, for the good news, when we first started discussions with CERTA about this, the price of the ticket office machine and the installation was $26,000, and they wanted Douglas County to put $16,000 uh, of the bill. Uh, well, we've been back and forth, had a lot of negotiations with uh, CERTA on this, and the bottom line is now that they're going to purchase the machine for us and pay all the installation costs. Okay. Okay. So, so I don't, I, this morning, I don't need uh, authorization from you to, to purchase the machine, and I don't know if I need authorization from you to allow them to install the machine in our facility. M maybe the county administrator or a county attorney can ask that, but, but we're ready to move forward with the insta installation of the machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, <coughs> county administrator and... Uh, can you respond? I haven't seen any paperwork that's required. Is there anything required from from CERTA? No, no. They 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 have the machine in stock and they're ready to come and install it now. We there there hasn't been any any paperwork, any written formal agreement. I, um, I have an existing machine. The old machine is there anyway already, right? All we have now is a a debit credit card machine. Okay. Gary, I missed what the question was. I apologize. But if it's a donation, is that what I heard? If it's a donation, it has to be received on the minutes of the county. So it has to go on the agenda to receive a donation. So there's disclosure of who's donating, what's being received, and what its purpose is. It would be CERTA installing a ticket office machine in the transportation center for the pur purpose of selling breeze cards. Do you, do you need it on for tomorrow? We can put it on. For new business tomorrow, if you need it, when are they well, supposed to be? Yeah, is it covered in this agenda? Yeah. Yeah. They're ready. They're ready yeah. to move on it. Well, we yeah. just need a letter that comes with it that they're installed, so there's not a presumption that we have to pay for after the fact. You know what I'm saying? You need something from them saying we're donating X, Y, and Z, including the labor for installation, blah blah blah, so that there's a record in the in the county system with the clerk of the county. And we don't get a bill later. Well, oh, that we misunderstood what you were saying. It needs to be in writing, whatever it is. Okay. Well, I don't know that I can get that yeah. by tomorrow. Well, we don't need to receive it. We can go ahead and prove it, but we don't need to receive it until we got something in writing. Okay. Okay. So can we can we say uh, they will install it subject to a written agreement or something? Well, like I don't that? think you need a written agreement. I think they're done. We're, we're, it's coming in as a donation, correct? Is that in, what? Well, what's on the agenda is authorization to purchase, but then since the agenda item was added, Gary found out that the item will be donated. Don't, don't well, let's just take the word purchase out and be donated by server or whoever. Okay. Yeah. And that's what's being approved, and if it changes, we'll have to come back to the board. Okay. That works. Yeah. yeah. It's a work session. It's fine. Okay. Any other comments? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Robinson, I believe you had something. I, I just want to frame this that um, um, confirm Mark and Gary. We did discuss this in our transportation committee. Is that an accurate statement? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, in, in discussing this, we did not make a recommendation because we agreed to bring it to the full board of commissioners. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. We didn't make a recommendation to. We made a recommendation to bring it to the board of commissioners. Okay. Right. Yeah. Correct. Right. So there was no recommendation from the transportation committee. I thought this was a broader comment because my, my point of not um, um, having it at the, at the lower level was it was. It was more of a, does it fulfill the ultimate goal of continuity of travel, right? It wasn't so much about I'm swiping or I'm, it's a cheap product or we got a better play. The question is, now listen, and, I, and Gary, you know I was looking at you like, okay, so uh, you can't get Martin Fox, but I need to get from where I am across the region. Right? And so what you're saying, and I want to make sure that the public is hearing this, and we can bring this up at some other time, but I want to be real clear that even with the acceptance of this, if it doesn't fulfill the functionality, in other words, like, well, why didn't we go with the full product offering that was, you know, I was in the presentation, why didn't we go with that versus this? I know this was the cheaper route, but does it fulfill me my continuity of travel so that when I go over to Cobb County, Right on that line, am I able to keep going? Don't worry about homes. 
My question is, can I get on right there uh, where, we, where we're supposed to be in these conversations that it has to continue? Can I use this card to get on that CCT and keep going east? That's what I want to know. The, the answer to that is, is yes, sort of. And let, and let me explain, <laughs> explain that. The uh, clients will be able to purchase the Breeze card uh, at our location. We can, at our location, at least to begin with, we will only be able to load it with certain products. However, the client can take that Breeze card that they purchased at our location and go online or at a MARTA location in Atlanta and load MARTA products on that. So once, uh, Commissioner, to your point, once they purchase the card at our location, then they can go online and add MARTA products or once they're in Atlanta, uh, use a MARTA machine to upload MARTA products onto that card. So yes, once they do that, there is that continuity from you being able to go from Douglas County to anywhere uh, in Atlanta using that one card. All right, so I, I, I got that and I appreciate that. And if I got my breeze card, I, can, I, I go to home, fine. You didn't answer the question. The partnership and agreement, the condition of the whole goal was that we would work with COP. My question is, can we use this product to get on CCT? Will they accept the certain product? That's all I'm asking. That right there. Can we continue to home, to get homes, to get Atlanta? The agreement that we agreed to was to go from Douglas, we will partner with our friends over at um, Cobb, load on their, their buses, and continue east. Does this, and my citizens have to pay twice. They use from Douglas to Cobb, and now I've got a reset on that bus. That's all I'm asking. No, it, it'll be seamless. Okay, they can, so in other words, when I get on that CCT, I just, what? Swipe my car and keep, or my little, and keep going? Yes, sir. That's all I was asking. Thank you. Thank you so much, Director Watson. Appreciate your presentation. Uh, number 12, um, authorization to amend the communications and community relations budget for the donations received for September the Saturdays in the amount of $18,750. Um, mm -hmm. Director Martin. Good morning, Madam Chair, morning. Board of Commissioners. These, uh, these funds are um, as a result of September Saturdays uh, festival, two-day festival that we had, and uh, as I understand it, um, the funds collected from the sponsors of the event. Um, we have to uh, request authorization to have our budget amended, communications, communications department budget amend, okay. amended, and that's what this request is about. Okay, pretty self-explanatory. Any questions from the board commissioners on this? Commissioner Guyton. Just one question. Um, didn't we do this in conjunction with the school system? Do they get this money or do we get it? We did it, they're the beneficiaries and the funds they receive are from the, um, the non-food vendors. We had like over 200 of them that had to pay $75 mm -hmm. um, for the fee to rent space and that's what they get. So where did this come from? Sure. So this came from um, total costs of uh, expenditures. You know, we're talking about uh, salaries for building management and maintenance, um, rides inflatables, rock climbing walls. Uh, there are other additional costs in terms of um, public relations communications over time and professional services also a list. <coughs> this came from sponsors, is that what you're saying? We collected funds from sponsors to pay for expenditures and that's to help. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Right. I was just confused because I knew the school system was involved with that September 7th. Yes, absolutely. Okay. I yield back. Okay, thank you, Director Martin. Thank you so much. Thank you. Tab number 13, authorization to advertise for a public hearing to be held on November 6, 2018 for the purpose of amending section 14-72, zones prohibiting trucks with more than six wheels to add to uh, some roads and remove some roads from the list of prohibited zones. Director Valentin. 
Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners. Uh, this, this item, uh, because we have to amend the county code, requires a public hearing, and that is, again, for the purpose of uh, adding some roads and, and eliminating some road sections from the current list. Particularly, the area in question is the Douglas Hill and Factory Shoals area that's been developing with uh, industrial uh, data centers and the like. And as those uh, zoning requests were approved or the site plans were approved, uh, the road still carried the restriction uh, against trucks. Uh, but uh, we're anticipating that obviously they're going to need to be able to get trucks into those facilities. So that was the primary driver for this element. There's also been a few other roads that have become cut-throughs uh, in some neighborhoods that, that uh, we've received a number of complaints about. And so we're adding those, looking to add those to that uh, list. Okay. Any questions from the board or comments? Yeah. Commissioner Guider. Um, the two that you were adding or uh, having the public hearing about is North Baggett and what? It's, uh, is it Beachwood? Yes, it's Beachwood. Beachwood? Yes. Okay. Um, We have some no truck zones now that tractor trailers are continuing to go down. Post road, we have a, a bridge uh, limit on that one, but they continue, I, I hear from uh, constituents all the time about the tractor trailers, 18 wheelers, you know, going down um, post road. Um, I think the sign at 166 and um, post is too far down post road for them to turn around when they see it's a no truck. So I, it needs to be moved up is what I'm saying. I think we have the same problem on um, South, Flat, Flat Rock. South Flat Rock Road it, because of the city limit. And we've talked, uh, I've talked with Mark several times about this. The sign needs to be put in the city limits, but it needs to be um, closer to the intersection where they turn. Because once they turn, they can't turn around. And um, I know that there's a problem with manpower and everything about policing this. Uh, Bobby and I were talking before our meeting about the number of tractor trailers is going to be coming around Bright Star Road and Highway 5 because of the huge, and I mean huge, <laughs> facility that's built within the city. Where are those trucks going to go? I think part of Bright Star Road is a no truck zone. However, I've been hearing from my constituents that uh, they're going down uh, Bright Star Road from uh, Douglas Boulevard to Highway 5, and that supposedly is a no truck zone. Do you know? I, I do not know, but I'll look into it. Um, well, that's what I've been told, but uh, you would need to look into that. But what? How, how can we police this? There's no need in making it a no truck zone if our, our no through trucks, no through trucks, if it's if we're not going to enforce it. Well, it is, uh, Commissioner, to your point, it is a good start because uh, to be able to enforce it, uh, it would have to be on the list as a restricted route. Uh, but I understand your point that that, that is the, the, the starting point. And then the enforcement is the second part of that. Because most of the, the <coughs> roads that we have the no truck zone on are the narrow roads and a tractor trailer is tearing up the shoulders and, and breaking off the uh, pavement and everything. So uh, I don't know what the answer is, but if we're going to have a no truck zone, we need to enforce it some way. Uh, so uh, maybe we can get with the sheriff's office and see if we can't uh, see what we they need in order to be able to have the manpower uh, enforce these no truck zones. Okay. <coughs> I yield back. Okay, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes, now. I have a comment. 
I, I'll just add, um, and you did say Beechwood, it's, it's yes. on you? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think the, the, the sheriff would we'd be more than happy for us to give him more manpower, <laughs> more budget dollars, and to, in, to do the other part of this, which I think is uh, ideal. Um, what about Cherokee? I know that's part of city. And is, is that, oh, well, we already got the signage up there, because uh, we, we kind of had this whole thing with the city and off of Fairburn Road, uh, Cherokee, and, and uh, I just passed a truck this morning, stuck. Mm -hmm. They couldn't uh, turn. Yeah, yeah, they couldn't turn back around. <laughs> yeah. But I think we got with the city and helped me correct me if I'm wrong and put the signage up further toward 20. Or what I know is at least out by the bank. So hopefully they won't make that right turn. But I think there's a signage up high somewhere that so they, they won't make the right turn. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Help me out, Mark, with that. Yes, and there's two big signs at right. the intersection. They can't miss them. Right, right. But I, I just saw one this morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Stuck on Cherokee, and it's like, wow. Um, but yes, I think what you're doing is, is, is great. I think this is just kind of the, the, the step in the right direction because we got <coughs> the signs need to be posted so that at least if, so that law enforcement can do their job. Because if, it, if not, then law enforcement can't really do their job. So, um, but there's some other thought process as to adding some other things to these through truck trafficking or not that we can possibly do though. But I think Mark and I have had a couple of conversations, especially with Breachwood about some other possibilities that we could get the community invo involved, meaning from a cost perspective, but at least we're having those kind of dialogue and, and hope that we can figure out what, what's next to kind of help relieve that, that food truck trafficking that, and I truly think too sometime, uh, no fault on the truckers themselves, but I think their GPS just kind of say, here's a route to go, and they go like, okay, make a right turn, and now they're, they're engaged and it's over at that point. Is, is there any way, any possibility that maybe from that GPS perspective, a GSI, or what would it be? You know what I'm talking about. That we can kind of engage from that perspective to, to make sure it's online, that, you know, that, that will hit that G, the, the GSI, whatever, whatever their, their driving routes, whatever that, that they yeah, use. Yeah, there, there's, there's a number of services, like Waze is one of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and and the, the Georgia DOT is very engaged with them, with the trucking industry, for that reason. Okay. Uh, to be able, so what, what we would do is convey that information to the Georgia DOT and they would then pass it on to Waze and other similar services uh, yeah. to, to get that rectified. Yeah, because somebody coming from Texas don't have a clue that they can't go up Cherokee or Beachwood. Don't have a clue. And they just leave you guys, at the law enforcement, in an awkward situation of like, you know, I'm, I'm in it now, so. I wonder how they disseminate between a truck and a car on Waze. I'm in my car, okay, and I go to Waze to get around the traffic jam. How, if a trucker's got the same Waze, he's gonna get the same shortcut I get. Exactly. How do you disseminate between a car, Good passenger way. vehicle, and a truck? I don't, I don't know unless Good they question. have different it, websites. It, it's the same <coughs> website, but but uh, it's it's a matter of getting the communication to the trucking industry mm -hmm. separately. Uh, yeah, because because uh, it, there there would be no way for the uh, information service to distinguish. Uh, but having conversations directly with the trucking industry to right. make them aware that there are certain restrictions in these areas. Right. And uh, so that so that they know not to follow that that particular. Way. Well, let's do, I agree, let's see what we can do on our end to help with that, because you're right. I mean, whether I'm driving my motorcycle or, or, or my 18-wheeler, what, what determines what I'm driving, what I'm taking, you know, the way you approach when, it, when I'm getting around. So, but something to think about. I yield back. Okay, thank you. So you will explore that for us, uh, okay. Director Valentine. Okay, I'll move on. Okay, you were scratching your head. I thought you raised yeah, your I'm hand. Don't <laughs> we go for it, but I, I'll yield. Okay. <laughs> Did you raise your hand? Because yeah, I, I saw yeah. Commissioner Mulker yeah. was scratching his yeah. head. Okay. I'll be real quick. I mean, you know, I appreciate the whole conversation with technology, uh, its uses, but we, we there's still human interaction. Uh, I, I take a, a healthy dose of, of, of I will never turn over all my decision making to a computer. I will never submit to technology while I need it more than anybody for supplementals and things I use to, to, to for what I have to live on a day to day it's one of those where like I, I don't want ever us to ever get to a point where we put things in place where you, you're being told what to do but you're, you're a human right so there's something about freedom and independence that says okay I get it but 
pay attention, right? Right. Pay attention <coughs> to what's moving. So uh, please explore all these things. Um, I, I, I just uh, I, I, please in your previous question on cyber, all of that. There, there's something about common sense. There's something about look. I'm interacting with my environment, but I'm not yielding so much that the environment moves me. I ask that you guys think through as you administrators are looking at things that like, okay, but certain things is to educate people to like pay attention, you know, um, and we sometimes we put money into things, it, it's like, okay, but why are we solving that anyway? But I get it as a supplement, but not to abandon um, our, our free moral will to think um, and interact. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Director Valentin Lumula. 14, authorization to advertise for a public hearing to be held on November 6, 2018 for the purpose of amending section 14-74, which deals with speed limits to add some roads, remove some roads, and adjust road lengths to more accurately reflect actual conditions. Director Valentin. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. This element also, because it is embedded in the code, <coughs> requires a public hearing. And what this is, um, every three years, I believe, uh, the uh, Sheriff's Department uh, has uh, to apply for a radar permit or authorization to run radar on uh, the list of roads in the county. And so we took this opportunity in, in conjunction with the Sheriff's Department to take a look at the existing list and, and co uh, confirm that all of the roads on the list were described <coughs> properly that the links were accurate as, as best we could determine, and that we had all the roads that needed to be on the list. And uh, so we determined that there were uh, a number, quite a number of roads that were not on the list that needed to be added. Now, the process requires, uh, the process is really embedded in federal regulation and it requires an engineering study to be done on the routes before they can be considered for inclusion uh, for a radar permit. Um, so uh, in conjunction with the Sheriff's Department, we looked at all the roads, including all of the new ones that we're looking to add, uh, all of the existing ones. We then sent that information to the Georgia Department of Transportation. They have to do an analysis and, and concur on the list. And uh, that process has been completed. So we're at a juncture now where we need to amend the code so that the list can be amended so that then the, sh the Sheriff's Department can file their application that conforms to our adopted list. Okay. And that will come as an agenda item uh, later on. Okay, sounds like a process. Mm -hmm. And I see that uh, you want this public hearing November 6th. So yeah. Okay, any questions from the board before we move on to the next one? Tab number 15, authorization to accept funds in the amount of $5,000 from Greystone Power for the Douglas County Citizens Academy Alumni Association and amend the uh, budget, um, external affairs budget, I'm sorry. Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Thank you. Stanley. Right. So Greystone has made a commitment to the Citizens Academy Alumni Association of $25,000. Uh, and they will be doing that commitment over a five-year period, $5,000 a year. So um, we're just asking to be allowed to accept those funds and, admit, and amend the external affairs of budget to um, allow those funds for the operation of the Citizens Academy Alumni Association. Okay. Commissioner Bolk here. Yes, thank you. Uh, when I uh, met with Gary Miller at Greystone along with our chairman of the Alumni Association, uh, Daphne Simmons, I think everybody knows, knows Daphne, mm -hmm. my left hand and right hand. Uh, mm -hmm. Greystone uh, conveyed a, a considerable expression of faith uh, as a great corporate citizen that, that it has a strong belief in propagating and encouraging uh, citizen engagement, uh, participation in the community and in the government. And to that end, the, the Citizen Academy has had about 60 graduates over the past 40, 40 years uh, of its existence. And because of those numbers of, of graduates, the, the uh, commission uh, sanctioned the establishment of the Alumni Association so what? Or to what end? It, it's all about uh, actively, continually, engagement, reaching out into the community, uh, into various activities. And so this funding is going to provide a, a non-governmental uh, stake 
in, in that citizen engagement. So I'm extremely, extremely gratified by uh, Greystone's faith uh, in, in the program. To that end, I have some recommendations that we would like the commission to give some thought to. Uh, as a great contribution comes in, it's also a great responsibility. Yes. And uh, some of my suggestions are that we uh, that we externalize the uh, board, the alumni association board, to include some uh, uh, public citizens, the public, uh, perhaps a, a Greystone representative, and also a representative from the from the county commission. This is needed to uh, uh, for oversight of the program and and, uh, uh, and certainly uh, to establish parameters around you know how how the money is, is to be spent. This is very this is a very serious thing. Mm -hmm. I, I take it I take it very seriously. And uh, and I also would recommend that that board also uh, present a semi annual report to the board of commissioners on what they have been doing, what they've accomplished over the previous. Uh, six months. So, so with that, I just extend my heartfelt thanks to, to uh, Greystone, great Douglas County citizen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mulcahy. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. I uh, do appreciate what Greystone has done. This is a nice milestone. So, thank you, uh, Director Stanley. Next, we have tab number 16. Authorization to approve the revised 2019 schedule for work mm -hmm. sessions and commission meetings. Um, Clerk Watson. Yes, we uh, inadvertently scheduled one of the work sessions on a holiday, so mm -hmm. we need to just reschedule that for the Thursday before, like we normally do for holidays. Okay, okay. which holiday? Uh, Martin Luther King. Jr. Okay. All right. Any questions? Or self, think self explanatory. Okay, T tab number 17, last but not least, which is appointment of January few to the Regional Board of Behavioral. And development of disabilities effective immediately. The board asked me last time to uh, look through the applications and uh, look at the background of these of the applications that we had. And January Fuse, uh, Dr. Few, uh, actually had experience in both uh, behavioral health and mental health. So that I thought that this would be. I recommend Dr. Few, Dr. January Few. Mm -hmm. Okay. This board. Okay. Any questions from the board? All right, next we have the approval of the, the expenses for next, I mean, for tomorrow. So please take a look at those board of commissioners and we will approve accordingly. And then uh, we have uh, commissioner comments of Vice Chairman Robinson. Do you have anything you want, you want to speak on these three topics? Yeah, I'm going to be very, very tight. How about that, Madam Chair? Yes. So we get us out of here. Okay, Mark, can you, I'm just going to move these around very quickly. Uh, and this is just for the public record. Um, um, what, two Fridays ago? Uh, we had a constitutional um, officer retreat, as we've always done. Uh, we pretty much almost had a full house of, of various people to come before the Board of Commissioners to pitch that are not directly reporting to Mark um, Till, the county administrator. Uh, well, I wanted to make sure for the record that uh, what was spoken in that public meeting um, gets into the press and gets into our official records. But Mark, do you have a couple of highlights from maybe one from all the areas that, that, that was emphasized, and it's just for the record. Yes, we do, and we'll actually go into it more in more detail at the budget retreat, like yep. we do every year. Yep. Uh, but essentially, magistrate, uh, magistrate, and DA were asking for new employees. Uh, I think Judge McLean, um, part of his part of Superior Court, was asking for uh, just letting us know that he plans to expand the accountability courts. Yes. Um, State court was uh, mostly asking for raises for employees. Public defender was asking for raises and a replacement vehicle uh, and a new assistant public defender. Um, clerk of court was asking for raises for employees. Juvenile court raises for employees. Um, legal staff assistant for juvenile public defender and uh, a couple of these departments have mentioned carpet specifically, but Mark Price and the building services is looking at evaluating those areas and putting them in priority on which ones need to be done first. Uh, sheriff department, uh, computer refresh, body camera refresh, and this is just an overview. Uh, 22 patrol cars, uh, new positions, and raising the deputy, deputy starting pay. 
right, that, that's it. I mean, for, for the record, again, um, I, I, we didn't have a full board of commissioners. I think that's important. We didn't have the press there. I think it's important to get these things on record, not wait to the retreat. And then we get all of a sudden that we, we didn't have time to sort of process this. But the last question to that, uh, County Administrator, are the presentations or any presentation that were done by these officers, are they available to us? Yes, they're on uh, they're in the Dropbox. Our personal, okay, in our yes, Dropbox. Sir. Okay. But that information is available to the public if they ask for it, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to move on, Madam Chair. Um, real quick. Uh, oh. <laughs> she stepped out of the All right, so me then. All right, I'll keep moving. All right, um, uh, James Worthington, really quickly, um, we want to talk about uh, neighborhood blight um, uh, that, that occurred, that is occurring in Douglas County right now. Um, Really quickly, can you give us this sort of a, an overview of where we are? And I'm going to give you a segue. Uh, 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 two weekends ago, I had an HOA boot camp in, um, at Deer Lake. The public came out, and I broached the subject to the citizens to get there, like as I do in District 2. Do you see this as an issue? Should we take any action? If a provision is there for us to get involved using public dollars to solve a private problem, should we? And that was my only goal. I mean, as you know, I don't go in there um, for the very first time and talking to citizens with this, this solution set because, of course, there is not one yet. We haven't gone through our full process yet. Um, and sometimes when you talk to citizens about si subjects like this, you have to listen. You have to, like, really go in there and just, like, you're not trying to sell them their hand. You're not trying to frame it down a certain path. You're just sort of like, okay, do y'all even see that there's blight? I mean, what do y'all really think about these incomplete communities? Of course, we didn't get into what the difference between a final plaid and is it unplatted or platted. Wasn't time for that. Um, I, I, my, my simple goal was to see, for my citizens, should I even continue to move forward? Should I even continue to endorse or sponsor this as a solution? And I got my answer, which is to continue on. That being said, um, I'd like to ask you, James, can you frame what would be our next steps? And that's it. I don't want to go long because I'm sure it has to get, we have to keep moving. Okay. But just frame the process. Uh, so the next step that we're involved with is um, some of the people that were here in the last meeting that spoke about it and their, their concerns and their ideas. We're, we're regrouping with them, kind of putting together a think tank, so to speak. Um, some of the people from this my department, some other departments in the county, industry professionals from a multitude of different places, um, including bankers, lenders, realtors, um, developers, builders, trying to put together a, a bigger group of people to get a, a broader sense of ideas. Um, and we will kind of just compile that and um, probably bring that back to y'all and, and go from there. Okay, so it's part of a process into policy. Again, we just wanted to frame this, Madam Chair, that we're continuing on. You're going to work through the process and we'll get back eventually. Correct, sir? All right. I'm going to keep going and tie thank, thank you. I'm going to keep going and tie this into my last comment about animal shelter. And, and so, um, as you guys know, all directors, every now and then, uh, we as elected officials, um, board of commissioners, especially me, will make a random call just to check on things, see how you guys are doing. And every now and then we get real life insight into the administration of what's happening. And we may discover like, ooh, right, because we don't live day to day. We're not 24 hours, seven like some of y'all or, or you know, on, you know, full on, full off, or even nine to five. And so every now and then uh, we get to do our job and we discover something. And so that being said, um, uh, one of the things that, that I came across was sort of this whole um, animal shelter. And it was, and I called Commissioner Moke here, and again, th there's a purpose for the animal shelter that we had there. But um, it, it, I, um, I was asking the question, and we got into this conversation about euthanasia. Uh, what do we do in an animal shelter that once uh, our policy says one thing, but what happens when we extend beyond that? And this is a policy that, that's something that we took on um, uh, as a board of commissioners when we first started with all that 5,000, 10,000 people weighing in on the animal shelter. I mean, uh, again, you guys remember that, that experience. But the question becomes, uh, as the Board of Commissioners take up legislation that we're responsible for, the question is how do we want to go about tackling that? So Commissioner Molker, I, I, I picked this one as one uh, to get your thoughts is that um, what happens as we go down, and I'm just, there's no action here. The point is as I go down the fact that in, in, a, in, in, in sort of the ordinance regarding um, the animal shelter, mm -hmm. the policy reads the following. It says, um, we go down the list and says, okay, if they're sick, if they're bad, 
and eventually you get down to what's called healthy animals. My question is, okay, so what do we do when we've stress tested? We, we're, we're 100 animals over. We don't have cages, we don't, there's no support. What do we do? Do we need to clarify what's healthy animals? And I mean, and sometimes it, it, you can't solve that here, but that's what the public debate is about. Both sides of that argument is like, what do we do, if anything? So I want to pause on that and yeah. broach the subject um, to, to say it's something that you want to uh, call, look into this and, and not to force the subject, but I'll stop there. Well, Madam Yes. Uh, certainly, you know, we're talking about policy review. Right. And this would be part and parcel uh, of that process. Uh, we and we also talked about perhaps a policy committee. Well, we already have a policy committee in terms of the animal shelters mm -hmm. and it's the, uh, the the citizens panel uh, that can certainly make recommendations. Um, the uh, now the animal shelter is not over 100. That was just hyperbole. What it was. Yes, it's so over 100. Uh, my understanding it was mm -hmm. it was full. No, it's, full. it's just full. No, no. We're just saying if you we stress tested above and beyond. Yeah, okay. What happens okay. when we had a spike? What yeah. do you do? Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And uh, the best thing that we can do is, first of all, we have to have we have to have a policy. We have to have, I think, also uh, management discretion on how to apply that policy up to a certain point. So basically, a policy within a policy or latitude for the management, uh, the director who's operating that that facility. The uh, shelter, first of all, everyone has to realize that the animal shelter main purpose, end of the day, is public health and safety. And it's, it's not adoptions and it's not reading programs and it's, it's not all of those other things, which I firmly embrace. Uh, I want to see as few animals euthanized. Uh, I'm a commissioner that attended a euthanasia. And, and that would have been a couple of years ago. It's one of the toughest, toughest things uh, I went through so I understand what's involved and I understand what's involved on the staff so it's something that we want to avoid at, at all costs mm -hmm. you often hear uh, no kill shelter now you have no kill shelters and you have shelters that are public health facilities that's that's the, the primary goal so how do you how do you balance those two things well most industry experts consider euthanasia uh, under under 10 percent to be a to be a no kill shelter because you do have those instances where a dog cannot be socialized. Uh, the dog is so injured that it would be a burden on taxpayers to you know pay for eight thousand dollars worth of surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, in, in situations like that, then that goes to, to policy decision. Um, Douglas County does a yeoman's work in being very very low and if not the lowest in the state. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll go out on that limb. If, if, I'd be shocked if we're not the lowest uh, euthanasia uh, uh, shelter. Uh, but there are things that we can do in terms of community, in terms of volunteerism and, and, and rescues. You know, we have rescues that specialize in poodles. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't get a lot of poodles at the shelter. We get a lot of pit bulls. And that's another inherent problem there. If you go in the shelter, you know, it seems like over half of them are pit bull or, or pit bull mixes. Mm -hmm. And let me say this, I've got nothing against pit bulls. I've, I've had them and they're, and they're great dogs, but uh, they can be abused and they can be, uh, they can be dangerous. So it becomes about, about an issue of adoptability and safety and putting animals in, into a home. I think that's got to be part of the, uh, the decision mechanism. Uh, again, I'll go back to my first statement. We have, uh, and I think we should direct and call upon our Animal Control Advisory Board to review policy and make recommendations to, to changes mm -hmm. and run them before uh, approval to the uh, to the full through the county administrator to the to the full commission. And pardon me if I got on my soapbox a little bit. Oh, okay. No, this <clears throat> was by. I'm sure may I close out. Sure. Yeah, I mean this was by design to, to, to set you know, Commission Bull here up to speak about this, but this was a real time example. Um, because it was a real example, we did reach out to Pat Folgel, mm -hmm. who's the um, chair of the Animal Control Advisory Board. Um, it's their intent to take a look at this, and it is on their next meeting, yep. the third Wednesday of October. Um, and that's for the public, I guess it's a public meeting. Is there, are there yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, at the, uh, I guess, the, um, the animal shelter right there um, 
of our Deer Lake. So anyway, Madam Chair, the point was just to bring this up as how we work alongside of you. Uh, there's some things that are uh, to the administrative and then there's some in which we have to, you know, come alongside. And I want to give my some highlights. Okay. Yes. Oh, Madam Chair, I, would, I forgot something in the conversation I had with the Commissioner Robinson uh, while I was out of town. I had to do with uh, uh, someone was being uh, dispossessed out of their, I don't know if it was a home or apartment, and I think they had six Great Dane puppies. Mm -hmm. yeah. They had six, and we had uh, we had three uh, we had three pens. And so it became an issue. What do you do? And uh, so I believe it was resolved satisfactorily. But you know, your first call is to different rescues and, and around the community. You know, surprisingly, I, I was uh, again. I'm gonna go kind of go, get in the weeds a little bit. I was surprised. Uh, I was at a gas station in North Georgia. And I saw this truck and, and trailer. It was more like a great big bread truck or something like that, big UPS van. And it had uh, Petco on the side of it. That van comes to southeastern United States, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, and picks up animals and takes them to the northeastern United States where they have a shortage of, of pet, pet. And so, that's another uh, thing that I think now that we have a, uh, a state-of-the-art shelter, uh, we can see some cooperation with the, with companies like uh, like Petco and PetSmart and so yes. forth that we couldn't before because of the status of our shelter at that time. So that, that's another avenue. So again, I apologize. I yield back. Okay. All right. Thank you all. That was some great discussion. Attorney Bernard, do we need to go into executive session? Yes, uh, ma'am. Personnel, uh, real estate, and legal okay. litigation. Well, Okay, thank you so much. Board of Commissioners, do we have a motion to go into executive session? Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Take a five <laughs> ten minute break and come back. <laughs> okay, Board of Commissioners, at this time we have any other discussions? No ma'am. Okay. Right. At this time, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Which street lights you were seeing? Just street. One of these days that things go bad.